Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. Good afternoon, baseball fans. This is John McLean with Lindsey Nelson welcoming you to the District of Columbia Stadium in Washington, D.C. and the first all-star baseball game. Brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company, maker of the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor. Remarkable super blue blades that give all but unbelievable shaving comfort. Foamy, the cream of all instant lasts. And right guard, the new power spray deodorant for men. And by Chrysler Corporation and its all-star lineup. Plymouth, Valiant, Chrysler, Imperial, Dodge, Dart, Lancer, and Dodge Trucks. The action cars for 1962 from Chrysler Corporation. The capacity crowd at beautiful D.C. Stadium in Washington is awaiting the arrival of President John F. Kennedy. Here in Washington today, the nation's capital, you couldn't ask for a finer day for this first All-Star game of 1962. The temperature at noon, a little over 45 minutes ago, was a comfortable 78 degrees. There isn't a cloud in the sky. There's a little bit of a refreshing breeze blowing from the right field corner toward home plate. But the fans at D.C. Stadium are so high that not too much air gets down onto the field of play. So, with a temperature at 78 degrees, the wind is west-northwest, 9 miles per hour, and the humidity a very comfortable 41%. The capacity crop, which has been a sellout for weeks and will reach 45,015, the official listed capacity seating of D.C. Stadium, all standing now, as we said, awaiting the arrival of President Kennedy. In the meantime, the two squads are being introduced over the public address system. That is the voice you hear in the background. Manager Fred Hutchinson of the National League and uh, the defensive champion, one of the largest hands of the day, goes to the venerable old gentleman who for so many years was the manager of the New York Yankees, now the manager of the New York Mets, Charles Dillon Casey Stengel. And there won't be many greater ovations today than that accorded to Mr. Casey Stengel, the manager of the New York Mets. As the players are being introduced, we'll give you the starting lineup for this afternoon's game. Since uh, we are in D.C. Stadium, the home of the Washington Senators, the American League squad is the home team and will occupy the dugout off the first base foul line. The National League, the visiting club, will bat first and uh, occupy the dugout off the third base line. For the National League today, leading off and playing at shortstop is Dick Groth. Groth of the Pittsburgh Pirates playing shortstop. Batting second and playing in right field, Roberto Clemente. Clemente in right field, also of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Batting third, playing in center field from the San Francisco Giants, Willie Mays. Mays in center field. Batting fourth, also from the San Francisco Giants, first baseman Orlando Sofeda. Sofeda at first base. Batting fifth and in left field from the Los Angeles Dodgers, Tommy Davis. Tom Davis, left field. Hitting sixth and at third base is Ken Boyer of the St. Louis Cardinals. Boyer at third base. Hitting seventh and catching Del Sandel of the Milwaukee Braves. Sandel catching and batting seventh. That ovation, in case you're in doubt, was for Warren Spahn, the winningest active Major League pitcher who was just introduced. The number eight hitter, 
For the National League is second baseman Billy Mazeratsky of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mazeratsky at second base, hitting eighth. Pitching and batting ninth is the side-arming right-hander of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Don Drysdale, who has won 15 games and lost only four. Drysdale brings the most wins into an all-star game of any National League pitcher in the history of this game. Only two other pitchers, both American leaguers, Bob Seller of the Cleveland Indians and Whitey Ford of the New York Yankees have brought more victories into this game. He has 16, and there is Stan the Man Ujo being introduced. The great veteran Stan Ujo of the St. Louis Cardinals drawing a tremendous ovation from the crowd at BC Stadium. Now the starting lineup for the American League All-Stars. Leading off and playing at third base, the sensational rookie of the Minnesota Twins, Rich Rollins. Rollins at third base. Batting second and playing second base from the Los Angeles Angels, Billy Moran. Moran at second base. Hitting third and playing in center field is Roger Maris of the Yankees. Maris in center field. Batting fourth, playing in right field from the New York Yankees is Mickey Metal. Metal playing right field. Batting fifth and at first base from the Baltimore Orioles, Jim Gentile. Gentile at first base. Hitting sixth from the Los Angeles Angels, the left fielder, Leon Wagner. Willie Mays is just been introduced. Draws a tremendous hand. The number seven hitter for the American League from the Minnesota Twins, catcher Earl Batty. Batty, the catcher. Hitting eighth, playing at shortstop from the Chicago White Sox, Luis Aparicio. Aparicio at shortstop. Pitching and batting ninth from the Detroit Tigers, right-hander Jim Funning, with a record of nine wins and four defeats. So your starting batteries for this all-star game for the National League, Don Drysdale pitching, Al Crandall catching. For the American League, Jim Bunning pitching, Earl Batty is the catcher. This all-star baseball game is being brought to you from District of Columbia Stadium in Washington, D.C. Don Drysdale, the National League starter, beginning to warm up. And say, Lindsay, haven't you got a tape you made with Don? Yes, John, and here it is. I know you're an adjustable razor user, Don, but have you tried Gillette's newest, the Slim Adjustable? As a matter of fact, Lindsay, I borrowed one in the clubhouse the other day. You know, it handles even better than the old one. I'll get one of my own. Like Don, men everywhere are switching to the new Slim Adjustable Razor, and why don't you try it? You'll find it streamlined from head to handle with a trimmer, compact design. It's longer and lighter, slimmer, too, for hard-to-shave areas like around the lips and under the nose. The new Slim is the very first adjustable razor at the low, low price of only $1.50. It's got Gillette's exclusive micrometer dial with nine different settings. You pick the one that's just right for your combination of skin and beard. With the Slim, you get a supply of Easy Shaving Gillette Super Blue Blade, a new experience in shaving comfort you shouldn't miss. See the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor at the low, low price of only $1.50 on display at a store near you. Now, once again, John McClain. The American League All-Stars are being introduced. Manager Ralph Huff, his coaches, Billy Hitchcock, of the Orioles, and Mickey Vernon, the manager of the Washington Senators. It would be very difficult to uh, say who drew the greatest amount of applause when the National Leaguers were introduced, but I guess you'd have to say it was a draw. Casey Single, Willie Mays, Warren Spahn, and Stan Musial all drew tremendous ovations from the capacity crowd at D.C. Stadium in Washington. The umpires for this afternoon's game, and uh, unlike... The day is when one all-star game was played, when they used to uh, change the umpires around, rotate them at the end of four and one half innings. Now that they're playing two all-star games, the umpires will remain at their starting positions throughout the game. And they will be back of the plate, Ed Hurley of the American League. At first base, Augie Donatelli of the National League. At second base, Bob Stewart of the American League. At third base, Tony Benson of the National League. And along the foul line, it will be Al Foreman 
of the National League, stationed along the right field line, and Harry Schwartz of the American League will be stationed along the left field line. And in the event of injury or illness to one of the working umpires, Mel Steiner of the National League is a standby umpire at this All-Star game. We saw Mel on the field before the ball game in company with Augie Donatelli, Ed Hurley, Harry Schwartz, and Tony Benson. The American League All-Stars are being introduced. And uh, while they are being introduced, it uh, will give us an opportunity to catch you up to date on this uh, huge, federally built D.C. stadium in Washington. It's a structure which uh, is combined for baseball and football and has an unusual feature in uh, that there is no lower deck of stands, no bleacher seats as such in the outfield. It's a double deck from the right field corner completely around to uh, the left field corner. And then only a top deck or a single deck from uh, the foul line to foul line. And in between, from uh, the left field foul corner, is uh, a huge, high, brownish colored wall. And along that is a track, like a railroad track. And uh, the stands, the lower stands, just uh, at the front edge of the visiting dugout at third base, around uh, to the center field area where the green batter's background begins, this entire stand can be pulled around by a half track or a tractor, some uh, sort of mechanism, so that uh, they become the sideline seats for football. Then straight away in center field is the green batter's background, and just uh, to the right of straightaway center field is uh, what is billed here in Washington as the world's longest scoreboard. It's 102 feet long, extending from uh, just to the right of straightaway center over to the right field foul line. First, we won't have to worry about scores of other games. This is the game today, the uh, all-star game at D.C. Stadium. Mickey Mantle of the New York Yankees being introduced and drawing a tremendous roar from the crowd. The two pitchers seemingly uh, oblivious to it all. Along the first base side, Jim Bunning, the side armor from the Detroit Tigers, who uh, has been one of the American League's most effective pitchers in all-star game competition. And along the third base side is Don Drysdale, who, uh, with 15 wins at all-star game time, with luck and continued good pitching, and with uh, the continued the great hitting of his Dodger ball club, could become the uh, first 30-game winner in uh, the National League since the Dizzy Dean did it back in 1934. The American League has uh, not had a 30-game winner since uh, left-hander Bob Mose Grove of the Philadelphia Athletics in uh, 1930 when he won 31 and lost only four. The foul line distance is at D.C. Stadium, 335 feet to left and right field. To uh, almost straightaway right field is 378 feet. To straightaway center, the deepest spot in the ballpark is 410 feet. To uh, slightly left center, 381 feet, and as we said at the line, 335 feet. President John F. Kennedy is making his appearance to the playing of Ruffles and Flourishes by the band stationed in Shark Center Field, the Presidential Party. Moving now into uh, the box, and uh, this, to my knowledge, is the first time that a President of the United States has ever attended an all-star game. There was one played previously in Washington in 1956 at uh, Old Griffith Stadium. And uh, Mr. Kennedy, and also an all-star game played here in Washington at 1937 and 1956, also at the Old Griffith Stadium, which uh, is uh, soon to uh, be dismantled. The uh, sod portion much of it uh, of this new D.C. Uh, stadium was that which was dug up and transported from uh, the old Griffith Stadium. Beautiful ballpark, and uh, at this moment, the uh, Speaker of the House, Mr. John McCormick of Massachusetts, is the meeting stand usual. Commissioner Frick, 
is introducing Stan to President Kennedy. They are exchanging pleasantries at the moment. And very shortly, it'll be play ball at D.C. Stadium before a jam-packed house. The president throws out the first ball to catcher Earl Batty of the American League All-Stars. It's begun the custom uh, the last few years for president to make two tosses on opening day. Whether or not he's going to throw another one uh, here, we don't know. He lost the ball to Earl Batty, the catcher. Earl has gone into the box to shake hands with President Kennedy, and uh, apparently Mr. Kennedy is going to uh, warm up his right arm again. He does. And uh, Earl Batty offers the ball to uh, the President, gives it to Frank Slocum, assistant to uh, Commissioner Frick, and presumably that baseball, too, will find its way in uh, to the trophy room that Mr. Kennedy has won. At, uh, the White House as a memento and a souvenir of uh, his appearance at the 1962 All-Star Game in Washington. Beautiful, beautiful day. You couldn't have asked for finer weather than we have in Washington today to uh, watch the stars in action as the gates were open here at 10 o'clock this morning. Lions were formed uh, long before that time so that uh, they could get in the seats and watch these great stars of both leagues participate in batting practice. And uh, the biggest oohs and ahs from the early gathering crowd reserved for Willie Mays, who hit at least a half dozen shots into the top deck in left field. It's only been done three times during regular season play at D.C. Stadium. The American League All-Star squad is taking the field. The uh, bullpen crew for the American League squad will go down to left field. Both bullpens are... Uh, back-to-back -back. the American League uh, bullpen or the bullpen of the home squad is out to behind the wire fence uh, which forms the outfield barrier at DC Stadium and the National League bullpen will uh, be in left center field. Photographers uh, still taking their pictures as uh, the uh, president is being implored again to uh, pose for just one more. Now we're about ready to start this all-star game, so it's a great pleasure for me to uh, introduce my working partner today, a man whose voice is known to millions as the broadcaster of the New York Mets of the National League, Lindsey Nelson. Lindsey? Thanks very much, John McClain, and thanks for a very fine job of setting up the color of one of the most colorful of all the athletic spectacles, the all-star game here in Washington, D.C. This is the 32nd all-star game. The first one was played in 1933 at Comiskey Park in Chicago. Up to right now, the American League has won 16 games. The National League has won 14. There has been one tie. Now stepping into the batter's box to lead off for the National League, the field captain and shortstop of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Dick Grote. Dick Grote is a right-hand batter. Wears number 24 on his back, called Double Dozen by Pittsburgh followers. This is his first start in an All-Star game. He says it ranks high on his list of personal thrills. In 1960, of course, Grote captained the Pittsburgh Pirates to the World Championship. In 60, he was the most valuable player in the National League, and that same year, he led the National League in batting with an average of 325. Jim Bunning looking in for a sign, has it now. And here comes the first pitch of the All-Star game. It's the curveball that is missing high for ball one. And the game is underway here, under perfect weather conditions in Washington, D.C., Temperature is 78 degrees, humidity 41%. Catcher Earl Batty going out to get checked out on signs with Jim Bunning. Bunning brings into this ball game a record in the American League this season of nine victories and four losses. Time is being called for the moment while the bullpen crew of the National League goes around the outfield warning path out to the bullpen area. So a play has been suspended for this moment. Dick Grote. Standing still in the batter's box, swinging the bat loosely. Grote's batting average last season dropped off an even 50 points from 325 to 275. However, this is a comeback year for Grote. He is batting 320 in National League play thus far this season. He's still looking for his first all-star hit. He played in both games in 1959 and in 1960, but he had only two at-bats in the four games. Did not start either of the games. Here is a pitch, fastball inside and low. It's ball two. Two and a to Dick Grote. 
Dick Grote never played a single day of minor league baseball. He came off the campus of Duke University directly to the major leagues. That's a fastball in there for a call strike. It's two and one. Grote also is an All-American basketball player at Duke University. He is 31 years of age. One of the finer bat manipulators in the game. He's a swing and a ground ball to shortstop. Luis Aparicio is up with it, plays across to Gentile in time. Grote has grounded out from short to first. One away, and that will bring up Roberto Clemente, the right fielder of the Pittsburgh Pirates. This season in the National League, Clemente is batting 342. He has eight home runs. Clemente was the batting champion of the National League last season when he hit 351 over the course of the season. Originally, he was the property of the Brooklyn Dodgers, was but drafted by Pittsburgh from the Dodger farm at Montreal. Check swing, but he took it too far enough for the strike. He stands deep in the batter's box to Roberto Clemente. The strike zone is anything he can reach with the bat. Slow curveball, swing on and miss for a strike two. And you hear the gasp of the crowd as Clemente turns and asks for the rosin bag to be flipped out to him from the area of the on-deck circle. Dusts his hands and now comes back. Jim Bunning. Chosen by manager Ralph Howick of the American League All-Stars because he is uh, reputed to be extremely rough on right-hand batters. Here's a swing and a drive in the right field for a base hit down the right field line. Coming over is Mickey Mantle up with it, and Clemente's on his way to second, to throw to second, and he threw it again safely with a double. The Verde's Clemente with a double lined out into the right field corner. Mickey Mantle playing right field, came over to field the ball and played it to second, but simply not in time. Clemente, base hit of the game for the National League All-Stars, a double to right, and here comes Willie Mays. Willie Mays, right-hand batter, hitting 304 this season. There are no left-hand batters in the National League starting lineup. Bunning is into the stretch now as Clemente leads at second base, and here is the pitch in there for Carl Strike. Curveball inside, and Willie turned out there a little bit. Jim Bunning says that uh, he likes to use a tight pitch on batters who are known not to like it and uh, is apt to pitch more uh, inside to that type batter. That pitch is outside for ball. One and one. In his second year in the Major League in 1956, his first full season with the Detroit Tigers, Bunning won 20 games and lost eight. The pitch to Willie Mays, swung on and foul back and out of play. One ball and two strikes to Mays. Willie came to the major leagues when he was 19, coming to the New York Giants from Minneapolis. He is now 31 years of age. He has a very excellent all-star batting average. In all-star competition, he has hit 425. Willie has made the all-star squad every year since his first full season with the Giants in 1954. Curveball, a little tight inside. It's 2-2. Willie Mays has the record for the most runs scored in an all-star in all-star competition, 13. Last year, he broke the record, which had uh, been previously held by Stan Musial. Roberto Clemente is at second base. There is one man out here in the top half of the first inning. Bunning with the pitch, cut on, and drilled foul just outside the bag at third. And on down the line, two and two the count to Willie Mays as he expects the bat. It appears to be cracked, and he is asking that the bat boy bring him out another one. Orlando Cepeda starts up to offer him one. However, he doesn't want that one. Now a bat comes uh, out of the National League dugout, and Cepeda relays it on up to Willie Mays. Willie steps back in that, with that familiar wide stance. 
Jim Bunning, on the mound, six feet three inches tall, 195 pounder. Bunning is 30 years of age, lives at Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Here's a 2-2 pitch, it's high, and it's out full to Willie Mays. Three and two. Bunning was the winning pitcher in the 1957 All-Star Game. He led the American League in strikeouts in 1959 and in 1960. It's a sidearm delivery, not unlike that of his uh, opposite number today, Don Drysdale. Payoff pitch, curveball cut on and full foul. Johnny Keane in the coaching box at third fields it and fires it right on back out to the mound to Jim Bunning. Coaching at third base, Johnny Keene, and coaching at first base for the National League All-Stars, Casey Stengel, the manager of the New York Mets. Casey on the lines at first base for the first time since he managed the Boston Braves. Here's a payoff pitch to May, swung on and popped up. In foul territory, back of the bag at first. Big Jim Gentile is there. He makes the catch. He's out. No advance by Clemente at second base. So Willie Mays has fouled out to first. Two men out of runner on, and Orlando Cepeda is coming up. Cepeda batting 309 this season for the San Francisco Giants. Has 18 home runs. In Cepeda's first season in the National League, 1958, he was Rookie of the Year. He was almost a unanimous choice for first base on this National League starting lineup. He was the starting left fielder in both All-Star games last year. Cepeda also was the National League home run champion last year when he hit 46. And he has drawn the cleanup slot in the National League All-Star batting order, although he does not always bat cleanup for his own Giants. Here's a pitch outside for a ball. Cepeda's manager, Alvin Dark of the Giants, is in the crowd here this afternoon, as are most of the managers and general managers of the major leagues. Again, Jim Bunning has the sign, and the pitch is on the way. It's high and tight. Two balls and no strikes to Orlando Cepeda. Jim Bunning last pitch last Friday against Baltimore when he won his ninth game of the season. He's set to work. There's a swing and a miss. Two and one as Orlando Cepeda took a rip at the 2-0 pitch. No score in the ballgame here in the top half of the first inning. Sign on the magic message board out in right field says, Welcome, Mr. President. And President John F. Kennedy is located on the American League side behind the American League dugout. There's a pitch cut on. He handles it right up over the plate in foul territory. Earl Batty is there, makes the catch for the out, and retires the side. Hit it right on the handle and popped it up just over the plate in foul territory. So Cepeda has fouled out to the catcher in the top half of the first inning. The National League got no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. And so, at the middle of the first inning, the score is the National League nothing, the American League nothing, Earl Batty making the catch there on that foul pop. You know, Earl can really pop up those pitchers. Don't know exactly what he says to them, but I do know what he said to Kurt Gowdy the other day. Let's hear it, Mr. Engineer. I see you've got one of Gillette's new slim adjustable razors there, Earl. What blade are you using? Are you kidding? As far as I'm concerned, there isn't any other kind but the super blue blade. Earl's not alone by a long shot. Since their introduction just two and a half short years ago, Gillette Super Blues have become the most popular razor blades in the free world by a wide, wide margin. Men and women by the millions agree they've never before experienced such shaving comfort. All but incredible. These amazingly keen, smooth edges are a real scientific breakthrough. The product of a special engineering process that's exclusively Gillette. And they're double-edged for extra convenience and economy. Pick up a dispenser of Gillette Super Blue Blades at a store near you. Ten blades for 69 cents, 15 for a dollar. Or get a supply with the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor at the low, low price of only a dollar fifty complete. Going now to the bottom half of the first inning, and the leadoff man for the American League All-Stars is rookie third baseman Rich Rollins. Rich Rollins coming into the ballgame today with a season's batting average of 318. And that includes 12 home runs from the Minnesota Twins. 
Don Drysdale's first pitch misses outside for ball one. Rich Rollins crowds the plate, stands up there just about as close as the law allows. He's known as a pull hitter. This one's fired in there for a call strike. Don Drysdale with a season record of 15 victories and four losses on the mound for the National Leaguers. His 15, the most victories ever brought into an all-star game by a National League pitcher. Swing and a foul ball coming back. Out of play. One and two, the count to Rich Rollins. He is one of only two 300 hitters in this starting lineup for the American League. Mickey Mantle is the other. Rollins is 24 years of age. And he is hit by a pitch ball. Fear ball coming in close, and Nick Fimi goes on down to first base and becomes the American League's first base runner. With nobody out now, Billy Moran, the second baseman of the Los Angeles Angels, is coming up. Batting 287 this season with 11 home runs. Moran is one of the big reasons for the Angels' lofty perch in the American League standings. He was previously up with the Cleveland Indians, but played all of the 1960 season and part of last season at Toronto. Here's a pitch tight. It's ball one. Moran is 28 years of age. Don Drysdale, the winningest pitcher in the major leagues at present. There's a swing and a drive into right field. Roberto Clemente comes over and hauls it down for the out. Halfway on the drive to right, Rich Rollins goes back to the bag at first. No advance. One away. And Roger Maris is coming up, the center fielder. American League All-Star is nothing, and the National League All-Star is nothing here in the bottom half of the first inning. Roger Maris, left-hand batter, who wrote his name indelibly into the record books last year when he hit 61 home runs. That pitch is outside for a ball. Maris is playing center field today, and Mantle is playing right field with the uh, permission of the commissioner of baseball as a concession to manager Ralph Hawk of the American League All-Stars. Here's a pitch to Maris. Sid is low for a ball, 2-0. and Maris was voted onto the team as a right fielder, and Mantle was voted on as a center fielder, but as of late, when Mantle has been out uh, with ailing legs, when Hawk has brought him back to the lineup, he has played him in right field. And so uh, he is allowed to play him that way in the All-Star game. Here's a swing and a foul tip. It's 2-1 to Roger Maris. He has 21 home runs thus far this season. Batting average of 249. Roger Maris, for the past two seasons, has been named the most valuable player in the American League. Drysdale's pitch swung on and fouled off into the stands and out of play. Back of the bag at third. Kenny Boyer gives it a run over. So the count is two and two now to Roger Maris. Defensively around the infield, the National League All-Stars have Orlando Cepeda at first base, Bill Mazeroski at second, Dick Grote at short, and Kenny Boyer at third. Tommy Davis is in left field, Willie Mays in center field, Roberto Clemente in right field, Dale Crandall the catcher, Don Drysdale the pitcher. Here is a swing and a miss. He struck him out on an inside pitch. So that is the first strikeout for Don Drysdale, and we'll bring up Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle is a switch hitter with a batting average for the season of 333. Batting left-handed here, of course, and here's a swing and a miss for strike one. Mantle has 17 home runs this season. Playing right field, as he has been doing with the Yankees, to take some of the strain off his ailing legs with less territory to cover out in right. Rollins leads it first. The pitch is in there for a call. Strike two to Mickey Mantle. Mantle is the all-star veteran of this squad, having started every all-star game since 1953, with the exception of the first game in 59. He has twice been the most valuable player in the American League. He has led the American League in home runs four times. In over 11 previous seasons, he's averaged 34 homers a year. There is a swing and a miss. He struck him out. The ball was dropped by Crandall. Picks it up and tags Mantle as he stands there. So Drysdale gets two strikeouts here. And in the bottom half of the first inning, the American League got no runs on no hits, no errors, and one left. And so at the end of the first inning, the score is the National League nothing and the American League nothing. 
Thousands of fans at this historic All-Star game today are keeping their own scorecards so they can relive every thrill in the days to come. Now, just imagine running out of ink in the middle of a big inning. You'd really be out of luck, but not with a famous paper-made piggyback pen. Because the piggyback pen carries its own spare refill. When you run out of ink, you simply unscrew the cap, reverse the sections inside, and in seconds, you're ready to write again. You see, the piggyback pen has two points, two ink supplies, a paper-made exclusive. You never have to worry about running out of ink. Like all paper-made pens, the piggyback positively won't skip. It even writes over butter. And it's unconditionally guaranteed to perform or we replace it free. So don't take a chance on running out of ink at a ball game or anywhere. Get the world's only pen with a built-in spare refill, the paper-made piggyback. Get a paper-made piggyback in mixed or match color combinations, only $1.69. Now to the top half of the second, Tommy Davis standing in, and the first pitch to him is low for ball one. The left fielder of the Los Angeles Dodgers with a season's batting average of 353 and 15 home runs. Right-hand batter. Here's a swing and a foul ball coming back. Out of play, and it's one and one. Tommy Davis leads the National League and the Major Leagues in batting with a mark of 353. Swings and sends a fly ball into center. Roger Maris has it lined up and makes the catch for the out. So Tommy Davis has fly to center in his first time up. And that brings up the third baseman of the St. Louis Cardinals, Ken Boyer. American League nothing, National League nothing. Boyer has a season's batting average of 293 with 15 home runs. This is the fifth season that Kenny has been on the All-Star squad, and he owns an All-Star batting average of 455. Some men perform well in All-Star games, and some do not. Boya apparently does. There's a pitch low for ball one. Jim Bunning of the Detroit Tigers looking in for a sign. Has it now. Pitch is in there for a call strike fastball. Bunning is the father of six children. He pitched a no-hitter against the Boston Red Sox in 1958. Here's a curveball. I'm in low, and it is 2-1. and one. To win this starting assignment today at third base, Kenny Boyer had to beat out such a star third baseman as Jim Davenport of the Giants, Eddie Matthews of the Braves, Don Hoke of the Pirates. Here's a swing and a foul ball, back and out of play. Boyer's best season in the majors was last year when he hit 329, third highest in the National League. He has the highest lifetime batting average among the veteran active third basemen in baseball. Bunning takes a moment to remove his cap and mop his brow. One man out, nobody on base for the National League All-Stars. And the 2-2 pitch is coming in. Curveball off the outside corner. It's full at 3-2. and two. Del Crandall kneeling in the on-deck circle for the National League. Defensively, the American League has Jim Gentile at first, Billy Moran at second, Luis Aparicio at short, and Rich Rollins at third. Leon Wagner in left, Maris in center, Mantle in right. There's a swing and a miss, strike three. Struck him out. That is the first strikeout for Jim Bunning as he gets Ken Boyer swinging. Two away, nobody on, and catcher Del Crandall of the Milwaukee Braves is coming up. Crandall in a comeback year. He's hitting 291, has three home runs. He missed practically all of last season with an arm ailment. Played in only 15 games last year. The year before, he hit 294, his top major league season. The veteran Del Crandall. He was barely 20 years of age when he came to the majors with the Boston Braves in 1949. Now he is 32 years of age. Bunning with the pitch to the right-hand batter. Low and away for ball one. No score in this ball game. In the top half of the second. The 32nd annual All-Star Game. Bunnings pitch misses outside for ball. It's 2-0. Oh. This is the third All-Star game to be played in Washington. It was played here in 1937 and again in 1956. Previously, the American League won one and the National League won one in the nation's capital. 
pitch is low and away. Ball three to Crandall, so he looks down to Johnny Keene. Coaching at third to get a sign to see what he's doing here on 3-0. and Whether he is taking or if he is free to swing away. 3-0 pitch is right down the pike. He was taking all the way. It's a call strike three and one. National League managed by Fred Hutchinson of the Cincinnati Reds and the American League managed by Ralph Houck of the New York Yankees. 3-1 pitch. Swung on and foul back onto the screen. Out of play. It's full at 3-2 and two with two men out. You may recall that last year at San Francisco in the All-Star Game, Warren Spahn started for the National League and pitched three perfect innings, retiring nine straight batters. Spahn is on the squad this season. 3-2 pitch. Cut on and foul back onto the screen and out of play. There were two last-minute changes in the squads. Henry Aaron sliding into second base at Chicago last Friday, injured his right leg and was removed from the squad, replaced by Warren Spahn of the Milwaukee Braves. And Hoyt Wilhelm came up with a sore arm and was replaced by Milk Pappas, both pitchers of the Baltimore Orioles. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Kendall going far to the outside, getting at him just on the end of the bat, so the count continues to hold him with two men out and nobody on base for the National League All-Stars. Again, Jim Bunning works, and the pitch is swung on and popped up into short left field. Coming on is Leon Wagner... Wagner calls for it, and he makes the catch in left field. So Crandall is out, and in the top of the second, the National League All-Stars get no runs on, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of an inning and a half, the score is National League All-Stars nothing, the American League All-Stars nothing. One of the finest second basemen in baseball, Bobby Richardson, is on the squad here today as a backup man for Billy Moran. And listen to what Bobby told Mel Allen the other day. Bobby, I see a can of right guard deodorant in your locker. How do you like it? I go for that power spray, Mel. It's fast, really does the job quick. Gillette Right Guard's push-button power spray is a fine aerosol mist that gets right through for complete coverage, complete protection from odor-causing bacteria. It's not like messy creams you have to rub in to get down where odor begins. Not like gummy roll-ons that leave a sticky, uncomfortable film. Not like drippy, wasteful, hit-or-miss squeeze bottle sprays that soak the underarm. There's no muss or fuss with convenient right guard. Like the song says, two seconds give you 24-hour protection. Two seconds by the clock. Right guard tick-tock. Two seconds gives you 24-hour protection. Save all day with power spray. 24-hour protection. Cool, refreshing Gillette Right Guard deodorant, 79 cents, or the new economy king size, only $1 plus tax. Going to the bottom half of the second inning, and the American League sends up the number five man in the batting order, Jim Gentile, first baseman of the Baltimore Orioles, left-hand batter with 21 home runs this season, batting average of 280, facing right-hander Don Drysdale. That pitch is high and away for a ball. You may have seen Don Drysdale in the movies or in a television drama. He appears in the extra parts frequently. Here's a swing and a miss. One and one. Starting to warm up in the American League bullpen, right-hander Camilo Pasquale of the Minnesota Twins. Nothing, nothing ball game to this point. It's a fastball inside to Jim Gentile. pitch. Swung out and missed. It's 2-2 two -two to Big Jim. Players in the starting lineup, with the exception of the pitchers, are named by a poll of the players themselves. 
The pitchers and the remaining squad members are named by the managers. And the managers, of course, are those of the previous Falls World Series. In this case, Fred Hutchinson of the Cincinnati Reds and Ralph Howe of the New York Yankees. The 2-2 pitch to Gentile. Tight. Drives him out of there. It's 3-2. and two. Barring injury, the starting lineup, except pitchers, must play the first three innings. Pitchers cannot pitch more than three innings unless the game goes into extra innings. Manager Ralph Hawk indicated before the ball game that Camilo Pasquale probably would follow Jim Bunning. Manager Fred Hutchinson indicated that Juan Marichal of the San Francisco Giants probably would follow Don Drysdale. The pitch to Gentile. High and away, ball four, and he walked him. And so that is the first walk given up by Don Drysdale. He gives the American League a base runner with nobody out and Leon Wagner coming up. Leon Wagner leads the American League in home runs with 25 from the Los Angeles Angels, a left-hand batter. Pitches outside for ball. The 2-2 pitch to Gentile. Tight. Drives him out of there. It's 3-2. and two. Barring injury, the starting lineup, except pitchers, must play the first three innings. Pitchers cannot pitch more than three innings unless the game goes into extra innings. Manager Ralph Hawk indicated before the ball game that Camilo Pasquale probably would follow Jim Bunning. Manager Fred Hutchinson indicated that Juan Marichal of the San Francisco Giants probably would follow Don Drysdale. The pitch to Gentile. High and away, ball four, and he walked him. And so that is the first walk given up by Don Drysdale. A base runner with nobody out and Leon. Leon Wagner leads the American League in home runs with 25 from the Los Angeles Angels, a left-hand batter. Pitches outside for ball. There's nobody out. Drysdale into the stretch. Pitch is swung out and missed. It's one and one. Leon Wagner is the real Cinderella man of this dream game. He was once with the Giants, was traded away to the Cardinals. The Cardinals sent him to Rochester in the International League, and that's where the Angels found him last season. Swing and a miss. One and two. Leads the American League in homers with 25. He is tied uh, the RBI lead in the American League with 65. Here's a swing and a ground ball to first, taken by Cepeda. He goes across to Grote. He's out there. The relay back to first. He's safe there. He beat the relay. But on the ground ball to first base, Cepeda turned and fired to Dick Grote at second for the force there. The relay from Grote back to Cepeda at the bag. Not in time to get Leon Wagner. So he becomes the base runner at first. One away, and catcher Earl Batty is coming up. Earl Batty of the Minnesota Twins. 280, four home runs. This is his first time in the All-Star squad. Drysdale now into the stretch. Here is the pitch in there for a call strike one. Ed Hurley of the American League is behind the plate. Augie Donatelli of the National League at first base. Bob Stewart of the American League at second. And Tony Benson of the National League at third. Harry Schwartz of the American League down the line and left. Al Foreman of the National League down the line and right. Swing and a ground ball taken by Cepeda at first. He plays to Groot for the first. The relay back to Drysdale covering. He's out. A double play. A 3-6-1 double play. Earl Betty with the ground ball fielded in backhand style. By Cepeda at first base. Played across to Groot and on back to the pitcher. Don Drysdale covering at first. So that in the bottom half of the second, the American League got no runs on, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of two innings, the score is National League nothing, the American League nothing. The other night in Boston, Kurt Gowdy got talking to Rich uh, about his uh, hitting, Rich Rollins, and uh, then they got onto another subject. So listen. Try the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor, Rich. I just did, Kurt. Take a look. Easy, man, easy. My face feels refreshed, too. Well, 
I'll second that. The new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor is a real step ahead. It's lighter for easier handling, longer for better balance, slimmer for those hard-to-reach shaving areas, trimmer, compact design, streamlined from head to handle. And the new Slim is the first adjustable razor ever at the low, low price of only $1.50. It has Gillette's exclusive micrometer dial with nine different blade settings. You select the one that's exactly right for your combination of skin and beard. Each Slim adjustable comes with a supply of remarkable Gillette Super Blue Blades. You shave so quick and easy with such incredible shaving comfort, you'll hardly believe there's a blade in your razor. See the Gillette Slim adjustable razor at the low, low price of only $1.50 on display now at a nearby store. Going on to the top of the third, and Bill Mazeroski is up. Pitch is swung out, and has a fly ball to the left. Over is Leon Wagner in the left field corner, and he makes the catch for the out. Bill Mazeroski swinging on the first ball pitched has flied out to left. And that is going to bring up pitcher Don Drysdale up for his first time in this ball game. No score is yet in the 32nd annual All-Star Game, District of Columbia Stadium in Washington, D.C. right-hand batter. Facing Jim Bunning. Swing and a miss for strike one. When this stadium was constructed here in Washington, D.C., a presidential box uh, was constructed uh, for the use of the president. However, he's not using that position today. Here's a pitch in there for a call strike. The President of the United States is seated uh, behind the dugout, along the right field line, behind the American League dugout. Two strike count to Drysdale. Bunnings pitches a curveball, cut on, and foul back. He got a little bit of it to stay alive at two strikes. And the President has shed his jacket and is in his shirt sleeves uh, behind the American League dugout. Enjoying the sunshine, a very pleasant afternoon here at the stadium. Two strike pitch to Drysdale. Almost knocked him down, had him ducking, and he ended up in the dirt. He started to lean back to take it tight across the chest and buckle at the knees and went down in the dirt. It's one and two to Drysdale. So here is the one two pitch. Swung on and fell back onto the screen and out of play. Count holds at one and two. No score in this ball game as yet. And the top half of the third inning. Jim Bunning set to work, and the one-two pitch. Swung on and missed, strike three. He struck him out, two away and nobody on. That is strikeout number two for Jim Bunning. And we'll bring up Dick Grote. Up for his second time in the ball game. In the first inning, he grounded out short to first. Here at District of Columbia Stadium, it's 335 feet to the foul pole down the line and left, 335 to the foul pole down the line and right, 410 feet to straightaway center. There is a low wire fence extending all the way around from the left field corner or around to the right field corner, seven feet high. Anything over that low wire fence, a home run. Here's a pitch in there for a call strike to right-hand batter Dick Grote. Slight breeze blowing here, and that's a little unusual in this stadium. Here's a curveball, a slow curve in there for a call strike. Both pitchers employ sidearm deliveries, and off the sidearm, Bunning came in with a slow curveball that time, and Dick Grote looked it over and has a count of two strikes. That pitch is way outside, missed everything, came right on back, no damage done, there are no base runners, came all the way back to the backstop. He counted two strikes. Bunning was taking no chances of getting anything good in there, and so it was way outside. One and two. The scoreboard located in right field here 
It's 275 feet long. It's 35 feet high and costs $397,000. The one-two pitch swung on as a ground ball to third. Rich Rollins has it. He's up with it, plays across to Gentile in time, and Grote has grounded out third to first. And so in the top of the third, the National League got no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And so at the end of two and a half innings, the score is the National League All-Stars nothing, the American League All-Stars nothing. One of the top National Leaguers, Ken Boyer, going out now to take his position at third base. Incidentally, Ken had a word for me the other night, and here it is. Listen. Ken, I'm just checking. What's your opinion of instant lathies? I like them, Lindsay. Personally, I use Gillette Foamy, and I'm all out for it. So many people agree with Ken that Foamy is a top favorite. Just touch the nozzle, and out billows rich, full-bodied lather that softens your beard, keeps it soaked throughout your shave from first easy gliding stroke to last. Yes, Foamy is the cream of all instant lathers. Next time you buy shaving cream, won't you remember this jingle? For a shave that puts you on the ball, Gillette Foamy gets the call. Shave is easy, clean and fast, get smooth and shave that last and last. Shave Gillette. Get cool, refreshing Gillette Foamy, regular only 79 cents, or the giant economy size, almost twice as much for only 98 cents. Like menthol, we've got that too, same price. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. It's free. Your first box of Jiffy Wrap. The new clear plastic food wrap. The coupon inside the box is worth 29 cents cash. Your favorite food store has Jiffy Wrap. Aparicio on his way to second. All around towards third. Roberto Clemente and Willie Mays after the ball. Up with it and pulling up at third base. It's Luis Aparicio with a triple. An extra base hit for Luis. And now Lee Thomas is going to bat here for Jim Bunning. Lee Thomas of the Los Angeles Angels is going to bat here, and there's a swing and a miss. He's a left-hand batter at strike one. Aparicio opening, opening up with a triple to right center field. An in-betweener that went all the way to the low wire fence. And it's a strike one count to left-hand pinch hitter Lee Thomas. Swing out a drive out into center field. Uh, it is taken by Grote out there in short center. Holding is Aparicio at third. A little bloop, actually, that appeared to be going uh, farther than it did. And Grote took it, ranging over to his left. No advance. One away, and Rich Rollins now coming up for his second time. He was hit by a pitch ball in the bottom half of the first inning. Still no score in the ballgame, but the American League threatening here in the bottom of the third with a runner at third and one man out. The National League All-Stars have pulled the infield in, trying to make a play at the plate. Don Drysdale looking in to get a sign from his battery mate, Del Crandall. The wind up in the pitch is a fastball low for ball one. Jim Bunning is now out of the ball game, having been removed for the pinch hitter. Camilo Pasquale continues to throw in the bullpen area for the American League All-Stars. Bunning has pitched eight consecutive scoreless innings of All-Star competition. Drysdale again into the windup and the pitch. Fly out and missed. It's one and one to Rich Rollins. Don Drysdale, of course, trying to work on Rich Rollins to get him there so he can drop that infield back. After the second out, big right-hander has the sign now again. Into the windup and the pitch. It's low and away for a ball. Two and one to Rollins with Aparicio, the base runner at third. Now action in the National League All-Star bullpen. Juan Marichal of the San Francisco Giants, a right-hander, is throwing. Juan Marichal heating up in the bullpen of the National League All-Stars. No score is yet in the ball game. Again, Drysdale set the 2-1 pitch. Swung out, popped up to the infield to the right side. Second baseman Bill Mazeroski is there. Takes it on the edge of the outfield grass. There is no advance. Two away. So Rollins popped out to Mazeroski, who went back about two steps on the edge of the outfield grass and right to make the catch. Drysdale had come off the mound on down behind the plate to back up any possible throw. There was none. He is returning to the mound now. 
So Aparicio led off the inning with a triple, but he is still at third base. And coming up is Billy Moran, the second baseman of the Los Angeles Angels. He's been up one time, and he flied out to Roberto Clemente in right field. Drysdale with an eye on Aparicio into a full windup and the pitch to Moran. Swung on and tipped back into the big glove of Del Crandall. Strike one. They play Moran almost straight away. He is known to be able to peck that ball uh, in all directions. Again, Aparicio leads down the line at third and the pitch to Moran. Swung on, popped up in foul territory into the stands and out of play. Back over into the stands behind President John F. Kennedy, who stood up and looked back into the crowd and is still standing in shirt sleeves and dark glasses, looking back uh, to see where that foul ball landed. Aparicio, who opened up here with a triple, uh, went up into the stands to shake the hand of President Kennedy before the ball game, and the president asked uh, that Stan Musial come by also, and uh, Mr. Musial went by. Here's a swing and a miss, strike three, struck him out to retire the side. So Moran is out swinging, and that is strikeout number three for Drysdale in the bottom half of the third inning of the American League. Got no runs on one hit, the triple by Aparicio. No errors and one left as Aparicio died at third. And so at the end of three innings, the score is the National League nothing, the American League nothing. Billy Moran up there in a spot to do some damage. However, uh, Don Drysdale got him as he took a hefty cut. You know, Bill's a man of few words, but what he says makes sense. And here's what he said to Mel Allen the other day in the clubhouse. Say, Bill, I see you're shaving with that new Gillette Slim adjustable razor. How do you like it? It's great, Mel. It's easy to handle, and I believe it gives me even more comfortable shaves than my old adjustable. Yes, the new Gillette Slim is streamlined from head to handle, lighter for easier handling, longer for better balance, slimmer for hard-to-reach shaving areas. And it's the first adjustable razor ever at the low, low price of only $1.50. To adjust it, just twist the micrometer dial to one of the nine different settings that's exactly right for your skin and beard. You get clean, refreshing shaves every time. Included with your new Slim Adjustable is a dispenser of remarkable Gillette Super Blue Blades. They shave you so quick, so easy, it's hard to believe there's a blade in the razor. See the Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor. It's on display now at the low, low price of only $1.50. Coming in now to pitch for the American League All-Stars, the curveballing right-hander of the Minnesota Twins, Camilo Pasqual, in relief of Jim Bunning. We have come three innings in the 32nd All-Star game with no score. The National League nothing, the American League nothing. As Jim Bunning pitched three scoreless innings to give him a run of eight consecutive scoreless innings of all-star pitching. He gave up only one hit, a double to Roberto Clemente in the first inning. He struck out two and he walked none. A fine performance for right-hander Jim Bunning here in the nation's capital this afternoon. Now Camilo Pasqual, who has a season's record of 12 victories and four losses. Known to have one of the finest curveballs in the game. He will be facing Roberto Clemente, Willie Mays, and Orlando Cepeda. You're in the top half of the fourth inning. As this All Star game is moving right along, a packed house of more than 45,000 on hand here this afternoon. In this beautiful new District of Columbia Stadium in Washington, D.C. right-hand batter, standing in now, waiting for the first pitch from Pasquale. It's on the way, and it's in there for our call strike. Clemente uh, sort of strided away from the plate to take a good look at that first pitch. deck circle for the National League All-Stars. As a curveball swung on and drilled out into left field, a broken bat face hit into left. Clemente turns first, holds on as Leon Wagner comes up with the ball, fires it back into second, and Clemente has his second base hit of the day. Broke the bat in the bat, uh, half of it traveled down about as far as the coaching box at third, 
where Johnny Keene uh, flipped it over. But the ball continued on a low trajectory right on out into left field. So the National League has opened up here in the top half of the fourth inning, getting Speedster Clemente on at first with Willie Mays at the plate. Willie's been up one time, and he fly, uh, fouled out back of the bag at first. The wonder boy of the San Francisco Giants, Willie Mays. Here's a pitch of curveball that is inside. Turn Willie out a little bit. It's ball one. Again, Camilo Pasquale is ready. Fires the fastball on the outside, low and away, and it's ball two. The defense shading Willie just slightly toward left, almost straight away. Of course, Willie Mays has power to all fields. He is that rare combination of speed and power. Pitches inside, throw to first, Clemente gets back safely. Big Jim Gentile, the first baseman down there. Jim Gentile, of course, was once a national leaguer, once with the Dodgers. Count of three balls and no strikes to Willie Mays. Squares to take it, and uh, it's in there for a call strike. Three and one. In taking the pitch, Willie Mays shortened up, bluffed the butt. Nothing, nothing here in the top half of the fourth inning. Clemente leads off the bag at first, and here's the pitch to Willie Mays. Low and away ball for and he walked him. So Mays goes to first base. That pushes Roberto Clemente up to second. That is the first walk given up by American League pitching in this ball game. And we'll bring up Orlando Cepeda. Cepeda's been up one time, and he fouled out to the catcher. Get a tight pitch right off the handle, straight up into the air. San Francisco backers call him the baby bull. He has raw power to spare. Big right-hand batter. Batting in the cleanup position in the National League batting order. Here's the pitch swung on as a ground ball foul. Down past Johnny Keene, coaching at third. Now on deck, Tommy Davis. Tommy Davis had the highest batting average in the starting lineup here this afternoon. Davis hitting 353. The National League had five 300 hitters in the starting lineup. The American League had only two 300 hitters in the starting lineup. One strike count to Cepeda. Runners leading at first and second. Here's a pitch swung on and pulled on the ground foul. Back towards the National League dugout. A two strike count. National League has plenty of speed on the bases. Roberto Clemente of the Pittsburgh Pirates at second and Willie Mays of the San Francisco Giants at first. National League All-Stars have only two hits in the ballgame thus far, both of them by Roberto Clemente. Camilo Pasquale takes a moment, straightening out the dirt there around the rubber. Now, I said, looks in for a sign from battery mate Earl Batty. He has it, goes into the stretch position, and here's the pitch to Cepeda. It's high for ball. Here's the fastball. It's one and two. Juan Marichal of the San Francisco Giants continues to throw in the bullpen. For the National League All-Stars, pitches can only go three innings, of course. And so Don Drysdale has completed his three-inning stint, in which he allowed only one hit to the American League, the triple by Luis Aparicio. One ball, two strikes to Orlando Cepeda. Here's the pitch. Curveball. High and tight, it's 2-2. Camilo Pascual takes a moment to rub up the ball. Now turns to look in for a sign. There's the pitch tight. Drove him back out of there, and it's out full now at 3-2 to Orlando Cepeda, with runners at first and second. 
and nobody out for the National League All-Stars. Making a bid here in the top half of the fourth inning of a game that has been scoreless up to this point. Milo Pasquale turns to, again to rub up the ball a little bit. Goes to the rosin bag. He is faced with the proposition of a payoff pitch to Orlando Cepeda. He has the sign. They are running, and here's a swing and a miss to throw to third, and he is out at third. A double play. A double play. Manager Fred Hutchinson of the National League has the runners going. On three, two, nobody out. Cepeda took a cut at a curveball, struck out, and Fatty's throw to Rich Rollins at third was on the money to get to Mene as Mays moved to second. Two men out, a runner at second, and Tommy Davis coming up. Tommy Davis has been up one time, and he fried out to center. So Camilo Pasquale with a big pitch there, a 3-2 pitch to Orlando Cepeda. Got himself out of trouble when he was turned into a double play. Here's a curveball breaking in there for a call strike to Tommy Davis. Tommy Davis, with 90 runs batted in and 126 base hits, leads the major leagues in both departments. He's 23 years of age, born in Brooklyn. Mays is running, and there is a pitch that Batty drops, and Mays pulls up at third. It is a call strike to Tommy Davis. And in his haste to throw the ball, Patty dropped it, and so Willie Mays gets the stolen base. Mays got a good jump, was off and running, and uh, the pitch was in there for a call strike to Tommy Davis. And as Earl Batty started to cock his arm, dropped the ball. So Mays is at third with two men out and a two-strike count to Davis. Top half of the fourth inning. No score. Mays plus the start. And here's a pitch low and away. Almost getting by, but Batty managed to dig it up. One ball and two strikes. That one broke way outside. Low and away. And Earl Batty, the catcher, had to reach far over. Willie Mays had bluffed the start down the line from third on the pitch. Pasquale has the sign working straight away now. The one-two pitch cut on and fouled off. He's still alive at one and two. Tommy Davis, in his first All-Star game, in his third year with the Dodgers, blossomed into stardom this season. He bats cleanup in the batting order for manager Walter Alston's Los Angeles Dodgers. Here at the All-Star break, the Dodgers, of course, are on top in the National League standings. One half game ahead of the second-place San Francisco Giants. There's a pitch hit on the handle and boofed out to shortstop. Taken by Aparicio there for the out. So Tommy Davis in a blooper taken by Aparicio. And so in the top of the fourth, the National League got no runs on one hit. No errors and one left. And at the end of three and a half innings, the score is National League nothing, American League nothing. Well, of course, every team is represented here, and the New York Mets are represented by star outfielder Richie Ashburn. I see a lot of Richie, of course, because he's with my home team, the Mets, and here's what he said to me in the clubhouse a few days ago while shaving. Anytime you get to talking about shaving, Lindsay, you're bound to hear about super blue blades. Yes, Richie, they're pretty popular, all right. After I first tried one, it was the only blade for me. Millions upon millions throughout the free world agree with Richie. Gillette Super Blue Blades give you an experience in shaving comfort you'll never forget. Fast, clean shave with so little effort, it's all but incredible. Super Blues have double edges for extra convenience and extra saving. Edges produced by a unique engineering process that is Gillette's alone. They're so keen and smooth, you'll find it hard to believe there's a blade in your razor. A dispenser of Super Blue Blades is included with the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor. The first adjustable ever at the low, low price of only $1.50. Or the blades alone are 10 for 69 cents and 15 for a dollar. Try them soon, won't you? You'll feel a big difference in easy shaving. Juan Marichal has come into the ballgame 
Now to pitch for the National League. Don Drysdale having pitched his three innings, giving up no runs on one hit, struck out three and walked one. And the 24-year-old right-hander of the San Francisco Giants has come on now. Juan Marichal with a season's record of 11 victories and five losses. And here in the bottom half of the fifth inning, he will face Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle, and Jim Gentile. This is Lindsey Nelson with John McClain at the 32nd All-Star Game in Washington, D.C. Maris has been up one time. He struck out swinging. Marischal with the pitch swung on and out to fly ball. Deep to left center field. Chasing it over as Willie Mays. Pounds the glove and makes the catch at the edge of the winding track in left center field. Willie Mays ranging across and pounded the glove on the way. And if you watch Willie over the years, when he pounds that glove on the way, it's a pretty good indication that he thinks he's going to make the catch. And usually he does as he did. One away. Mickey Mantle coming up. He has been up one time and was called out on strikes. So far, this has been a pitcher's all-star game. No score here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. National League All-Stars have two hits, and the American League All-Stars have one. Luis Saparicio with a triple off Don Drysdale, the only American League hit to this point. Mickey Mantle had the highest batting average in the starting lineup, hitting 333, and the only other 300 hitter was Rich Rollins at 318 in the American League starting lineup. That pitch is high. Ball one to Mantle. Marischal kicks and fires on its outside for a ball. 2-0. Oh. The President of the United States in attendance here this afternoon. He made his entry through the dugout, through the American League dugout, just before the start of the ball game. Vice President Lyndon Johnson is here as well. 2-0 oh pitch is inside. It's three balls and no strikes to Mickey Mantle. Star slugger of the New York Yankees. Of course, at uh, time of this All-Star break, the New York Yankees are on top in the American League standings. One game ahead of the second place Cleveland Indians. That is a pitch high, and he has walked Mantle on four pitch balls. That is the second walk issued to the American League All-Stars today. It gives them a base runner at first and Jim Gentile coming up. And we are going to have now a pinch runner for Mantle, and it's going to be Rocky Calavito. Rocky Calavito is coming in to run for Mantle. Mantle is out of the ball game, And it is a good bet that Calavito will stay in the ball game in left field and that Leon Wagner will be moved over to right next inning. Calavito of the Detroit Tigers running for Mickey Mantle at first base. Jim Gentile, a left-hand batter, waiting for a pitch, and it's on the way. Swung on and popped up foul. Back of the National League dugout. Mickey Vernon, the manager of the Washington Senators, is coaching at first base this afternoon for the American League All-Stars, and Billy Hitchcock, the manager of the Baltimore Orioles, is coaching at third base. Pitch swung on and missed for strike two. Jim Gentile took a rip at that one. Gentile uh, walked in the bottom half of the second inning. His only previous appearance at the plate in this ball game. Calavita leads off the bag at first, and there's a pitch high for a ball. No attempt being made by first baseman Orlando Cepeda to hold the runner on at first. Marichal into the stretch position. And the one-two pitch to Gentile. Cut on and popped up into left field. Tommy Davis is called for it. Has the sunglasses snapped down. He waits. And Tommy Davis makes the catch for the out. Halfway on the fly ball to left. Rocky Calavito returns to the bag at first. Two away. Calavito still at first. And Leon Wagner is coming up. Slugging left fielder of the Los Angeles Angels. Actually, he's played left and right. Playing, of course, under Bill Rigney at Los Angeles. Rigney managed him uh, when both were with the San Francisco Giants. He's been up one time in this game and hit into a force play. 
Matt pitches high and away for a ball. Leon Wagner, of course, was delighted when he learned that he was going to be the third man in an all-star outfield of Mantle, Maris, and Wagner. He watches high and away. It's ball two. Marichal with the pitch. Cut on and fouled off into the stands and out of play. On deck now for the American League All-Stars is Earl Batty, wearing a special protective face guard attached to the helmet. Marichal into the stretch position. Calavito leads it first. The 2-1 pitch is low for a ball. It's 3-1. Whenever you think of pitchers in all-star games, of course, you must think of Carl Hubble at the Polo Grounds in 1934 when he authored one of the greatest pitching feats in all-star history, striking out in succession Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox, Al Simmons, and Joe Cronin. Marichal with a 3-1 pitch. Let a pitch swung on and fouled on the left field line. Chased down there by Ken Boyer. And he is there and he makes the catch in foul territory. For the odds that retires the side. So Wagner has fouled out and in the bottom of the fourth, the American League All-Stars get no runs on, no hits, no errors, and one left. And so at the end of four innings, the score is the National League nothing, the American League nothing. One of the big ball players in this game, of course, Tommy Davis, who has blossomed into real stardom this season. Tommy's big news, and when he's being interviewed, it's hard to get a question in edgewise, but I did. Listen. Tommy, have you tried the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor yet? Yeah, Lindsay. Been using one a couple of weeks now. I sure like the way it handles. Real easy shaving. It's a safe bet you'll go along with, Tommy, when you try the Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor. It sells for the low, low price of only $1.50, a real saving. But that's just part of the news about the Slim Adjustable. It's streamlined from head to handle. Lighter. Longer for better balance. Slimmer, too, for hard-to-shave spots under the nose and chin. One of nine different settings on its exclusive micrometer dial is exactly right for your combination of skin and beard. With it, you get a dispenser of Gillette Super Blue Blades. They're double-edged for economy, so keen and easy shaving, you hardly know there's a blade in your razor. Look for the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor at a nearby store. Only $1.50, the lowest price ever for an adjustable razor. Rocky Calavito has gone into the ball game in left field, and Leon Wagner has moved over to right. And Leon Wagner has moved over to right. So if you're keeping a scorecard, put Calavito into left field, and Leon Wagner into right field. Calavito, of course, will bat number four in the batting order in Mickey Mantle's place in the American League batting order. Right now, Ken Boyer, St. Louis Cardinal third baseman, is up. There's a swing and a foul ball. Back and out of play for strike one. Boy has been up one time and he struck out swinging. A perfect baseball afternoon here at District of Columbia Stadium. Low humidity. Sunny and completely clear and comparatively cool. Pitch is swung on as a ground ball to short. Luis Aparicio on a big hop wings it across to Gentile in time, and Boyer has grounded out short to first. One away, and that'll bring up Del Candle. The American League nothing, the National League nothing. And we're in the top half of the fifth inning. Crandall has been more up one time, and he flied out to left field. Speaking a moment ago as we were about uh, the five strikeouts by Hubble, strangely enough, the National League did not win that game. Despite the great feat by Hubble, the American League won that ball game in 1934. It's just in there for a call strike. Of course, the All-Star Series has been a series of tremendous baseball feats, as you would figure with the very best in the game competing. 
strike one pitch, swung on and fouled off. It's strike two to Crandall. The summer second All-Star game will be played at Wrigley Field in Chicago on July 30th. The President of the United States having quite a time now uh, watching Casey Stengel on the coaching lines at first base. Here's a two-strike count, a curveball that comes in high, and it's one and two. We were asking Casey before the ball game when he was last on the coaching lines. He said uh, in Boston when he managed the Braves, and he said, I had a piece of the club, so actually I came out on the lines to count the house. One and two of the count to Del Crandall. Pasquale with the pitch. Swung on as a little number right back to Camilo Pasquale. He gloves it, fires over the first in time to get Crandall. Grinding out pitcher to first. Two away, nobody on for the National League. And Bill Mazeroski coming up, batting number eight in the National League batting order. Second baseman for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And everybody remembers what uh, Bill Mazeroski is most noted for in his career. In the seventh game of the World Series in 1960 against the New York Yankees, he hit a home run in the bottom half of the ninth inning to win the World Championship for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's been up one time in this ball game, flied to left. Ducks under a curveball, takes it high, ball one. game, we can expect uh, all sorts of changes to be made, of course. There's a pitch missing outside. It's ball two. Both manager Ralph Hawk and manager Fred Hutchinson uh, said yesterday at a press conference that they like to get as many ball players in the game as possible. It's a great honor to play in the game, and uh, they hate to see ball players come a great distance and sit on the bench. However, this is a scoreless ball game. And here's a swing and a pop out towards second. Aparicio moves over and takes it just behind Billy Moran. Aparicio taking it in short center. And so Camilo Pasquale got the National League out in order with no runs on, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And so, at the end of four and a half innings, the score is the National League All-Stars nothing, the American League All-Stars nothing. The first half of today's game was brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. The second half of today's game is brought to you by the Chrysler Corporation. If you're looking for value, look twice at Valiant during All-Star Value Days. Fun time, summertime, best time to buy, best time to drive a new Valiant, a new Valiant. Right now, you'll save plenty on Valiant, America's most rugged compact, during All-Star Value Days from Chrysler Corporation. Valiant is priced less than most other compacts, and low price is just the beginning. You'll keep on saving when you drive a Valiant. Its sizzling slant six engine gives you a lot more action on a lot less gas. Valiant won its class in the recent mobile gas economy run. And you save again with Valiant's battery-saving alternator. The alternator keeps the kick in your battery when others are caulking up. It's another first on all Chrysler Corporation cars. Further proof that nobody beats Valiant for value. See your dealer now. Nobody will beat the trade you'll get on Valiant during all-star value days. Going out of the bottom half of the fifth, and it is my pleasure to introduce your play-by-play announcer for the second half of today's game, the voice of the Washington Senators who feels right at home here at D.C. Stadium, John McClain. Thank you very much, Lindsay, and hello again, everybody. Earl Batty, the catcher, leads off against right-hander Juan Marichal of the Giants, who kicks high and throws overhand and misses outside. Fastball on away, and it's one and nothing. Batty has been up once, and he grounded into a double play. A fine fielding play by Cepeda. The pitch coming is hit down the right field line, twisting out foul. Racing for it, Cepeda, Mazeroski, Clemente coming over. They can't get it. It lands untouched along the box seat railing in right field. Ball one and strike one to Earl Batty. Lindsay made reference to the special face guard that Earl Batty wears. American League fans are very familiar with it. Batty twice in his major league career has been hit by pitch balls. He was advised by the doctors that he should uh, protect the left temple to keep from being injured seriously. The pitch to him is a high curve for a ball. It's 2-1. Ball two and strike one. Activity starting in the National League. All-star bullpen, Bob Perkey of the Cincinnati Reds, a right-hander working. 
Marischal pumps twice this time, kicks and throws. Fastball hit to right field. Backing is the right fielder, Clemente. He's got it, and there's one out. Matty sliced a line drive to right field. Roberto Clemente of the Pirates drifted back easily and took it for the out. And now here is little Louis, Luis Aparicio of the White Sox, the American League All-Star shortstop. He has the American League's only base hit this afternoon, a triple hit into the alley between Clemente and Mays, all the way to the fence in right center field. Base hit came off Drysdale with nobody out, but Drysdale got the next three. Pitch from Marichal is high outside. Sidearm pitch that time from Marichal, and it's one and nothing. The outfield plays Aparicio straight away. The infield is turned left and up a step in deference to Louis's great speed. Here's the pitch coming. Outside high, a fastball missed, and it's two and nothing. Ball two and no strikes. No score in the game. Last half of inning number five at beautiful D.C. Stadium in the nation's capital. The 2-0 pitch on its way. Fastball accidentally fouled, slicing into the lower stands to the right of the screen. Ball two and strike one, the count. Aparicio is trying to get the bat out of the way, and it's sliced foul into the lower stand. Ball two and strike one, the count. Pitcher Pasquale, due up next. Here's the pitch. Ground ball hit sharply to the shortstop. Groat is up with it. Throws to first in time. Aparicio is out by three steps. Two down now for the American League in the fifth inning. And in a scoreless ball game, Pasquale is going to back for himself here in the fifth inning. The and Pasquale is a good hitting pitcher. As he bats with two out and the base is empty in the last half of the fifth inning. Only three hits in the game as the pitchers have been in command. Two by the National, one by the American. Marichal's delivery hit on the ground sharply past the mound of a Coptic group that Charty throws to first. Pasquale is out, and the sides retired in order for the American League All-Stars in the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. And so at the end of the fifth inning, the score is National League All-Stars nothing, American League All-Stars nothing. Hey, friend, can I borrow your field glasses? Sure. Here you are. What's going on? I want to check the price of that Plymouth Savoy on the billboard in center field. No. It can't be. Well, what is it? 2206. Let me see those glasses. You must be looking at the scoreboard. That's the right price, my friend. Twenty-two oh six, and right now you can get a low price, high trade deal on all Plymouths during All Star Value Days. And the low price includes the famous built-in value from Chrysler Corporation, Unibody Construction, the battery-saving alternator, thirty-two thousand miles between major loop jobs. You'll get the buy of the year on a Plymouth Savoy during All Star Value Days. Only twenty-two oh six, based on manufacturer's suggested retail price, exclusive of destination charges. You were right, buddy. That Plymouth's only 2206. Well, here he comes. Stan the man, Musio, is going to bat for Juan Marichal. And there's the roar from the crowd before Musio is even introduced. of them all in all-star competition, 19 all-star games. For Stan Musial, as he bats against Camillo Pasquale to lead off the top of the sixth inning, takes a call strike as Pasquale barreled the fastball through at the knees, nothing in one. Stan, at the age of 41, hitting 330 in regular season play. Crouched at the knees, he takes a curve over, strike two call. Pasquale changed up beautifully that time and had his let up curve on the outside corner above the knee. So Musial batting for Marichal is behind nothing in two in the top of the sixth inning. National League All Stars, the American League All Stars, no score. Pasquale in the easy motion kicks and throws. There's a line drive, takes it to right field on a two strike pitch by Musial. Stan 
Coast Show. Delivered with a lead-off single, hit number three for the next of the call stars. And Marty Wills from the Dodgers is running for musical at first base. And keep an eye on this fellow. He has stolen 46 bases in the National League this year. And he's a Washington boy. Shortstop Dick Rowe, a good hit and run man at the plate. And with Wills, who can fly at first and nobody out, Pasquale will have to keep an eye on Murray Wills. Gentile holding tight to the bag to set the pitch cutting. A bluff bunt by Grota. Strike call by plate umpire Ed Hurley. Grota squared around as if to bunt and took a breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. The outfield shading Grota toward right. Even though he's a right-hand batter, they do not play him to pull. The infield is up a step. Rollins into the edge of the inner grass at third, looking for the bunt. Pasquale ready to go as well. The pitch hung on and missed, and Batty makes no throw to second base. It's a clean steal by Maury Will. Throat swinging to protect the runner, lost his bat and threw it past the on-deck hitter, Bob Clemente. Will's got a tremendous jump on Camillo Pasquale, and Earl Batty saw that he had no chance, no point in throwing. A steal of second by Murray Wills with nobody out and a two-strike count to Dick Grote. Grote is 0 for 2. He's grounded the short, grounded the third. Pasquale's pitch, curveball, sliced foul out of play. Down the right field side. Two strikes, the count to Dick Grote. The big hole in the outfield against Grote is in left center. Dick hits out of an overly close stance. Chokes up in the bat a couple of inches. Maury Wills at second base with nobody out. Top of the sixth, no score. Pasquale ready, rocks and throws. A foul as Grote was trying to go to right field with the ball. Swung late and just nicked it foul. In the American League bullpen is the Cleveland Indians ace right-hander, Dick Donovan. Bob Perkey of the Cincinnati Reds and the National League All-Stars heating up in the visiting bullpen. Two strikes to Dick Groth. No score. Four hits in the game. The National has three. The American League has one. Pasquale pitching with Wills at second base. Nobody out. Two strike pitch coming to Groth. Swung on. Hit up the middle. A base hit on into center field. Around third. Coming to the plate is Wills. And the National League leads one to nothing. Rounds a shack single through the box in the center field, scoring Murray Wills from second base. For the first run of the ball game, breaking the scoreless deadlock, it's the National League All-Stars one, the American League All-Stars nothing. And here is Bob Clemente, who has two of the National League's total of four hits. Dick Grote now steps off first base as time is called to talk to Casey Single. Stengel points toward the National League All-Star dugout, indicating the growth. Young man, get your sign for Mr. Hutchinson. Jim Gentile holding against the runner Grote at first. Clemetti doubled the right in the first. He singled the left in the fourth inning. The set by Pasquale. The pitch is inside. Skip high, fastball, ball one. Clemetti... Stepped back out of the batter's box and gave Pasquale uh, plenty of room at the plate, but Camillo missed inside. One and nothing the count. It's one nothing National League leading. Musial batted for Marichal and singled. Wills ran for him, stole second, and then Grote singled on a two-strike pitch on the ground in the center field to get Wills home easily. Pasquale, deliberate worker, sets at the waist and throws. Curve ball hit sharply through the hole in the left field of base hit. Grote is down to second, round second and holds as Calavito comes up with the ball. And there are two on with nobody out for the National League. A run is in. And three straight singles off Pasquale. And that is Bob Clemente's third straight hit. A double and two singles. And all Pasquale has to do now is sit to Willie Mays with runners at first and second and nobody out. Mays has fouled the first and walked. He turns now and looks into the National League dugout. Bob Clemente at first base. 
Dick Rode at second base. The National League All-Stars lead it one to nothing. Top half of the sixth inning at D.C. Stadium in Washington. Pasquale has his sign from Batty. He delivers to Mays, who swings the drive to deep into center field. Backing is Harris. Still backing at the warning track. He's got it for the out. Tagging his second, moving to third is Grote. Tagging his first, going to second is Plumetti. A fly ball hit over 400 feet to straightaway center field by Willie Mays. Hot. At the base of the fence by Roger Maris. But the ball was hit so deep. But Grote, the runner in second, tagged easily and moved to third. And Clemente took second after the catch. That'll bring up Orlando Cepeda, the first baseman who has fouled to the catcher and struck out into a double play with runners in second and third in the fourth inning. A 3-2 pitch to Cepeda. Pasquale struck him out swinging and Batty threw out Clemente at third base. Cepeda ducks under a high curve, ball one. Most American League uh, observers agree that Pasquale has just about the finest curveball seen in the league since the heyday of Tommy Bridges of the Detroit Tigers. The infield is drawn in now for play at the plate. Cepeda swings. It's a slow tap towards third. Cut off by Rollins. He's have to go to first. He gets Cepeda. The run scores. And on to third moves Bob Clemente. A slow trickler toward shortstop that was cut off by the third baseman, Rich Rollins. His only play was at first base to get Cepeda. With Grote scoring from third, the second run of the ball game, and Clemente moving from second to third. It's a run batted in for Cepeda. The National League All-Stars have Clemente at third base with two out. Two runs are in, and it's 2 nothing. the National League All-Stars leading. The batter is Tommy Davis of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He takes the curve outside low, ball one. Davis has fly to center and popped to short. He is 0 for 2. 2 nothing. the National League All-Stars lead it. Top of the sixth inning, Pasquale kicks and throws. A ground ball hit toward the hole. Beautiful stop by Rollins. He throws to first. Davis is out. A fine play by rookie third baseman Rich Rollins for the Minnesota Twins. One of the six running, the National League All-Stars scored two runs on three hits. There were no American League All-Star errors. One runner left on for the Nationals. And after five and one half innings of play, the score is the National League All-Stars to the American League All-Stars nothing. If you're looking for value, look twice at Valiant during All-Star Value Day. Fun time, summertime, best time to buy best time to drive a new Valiant, a new Valiant. Right now, you'll save plenty on Valiant, America's most rugged compact, during All-Star Value Days from Chrysler Corporation. Valiant is priced less than most other compacts, and low price is just the beginning. You'll keep on saving when you drive a Valiant. Its sizzling slant six engine gives you a lot more action on a lot less gas. Valiant won its class in the recent mobile gas economy run. And you save again with Valiant's battery-saving alternator. The alternator keeps the kick in your battery when others are caulking up. It's another first on all Chrysler Corporation cars. Further proof that nobody beats Valiant for value. See your dealer now. Nobody will beat the trade you'll get on Valiant during All-Star Value Days. The National League All-Star Manager, Freddie Hutchinson of the Cincinnati Reds, are making changes now. We have a complete new infield for... The National League stars, Ernie Banks of the Chicago Cubs is at first base, Frank Bolding of the Milwaukee Braves at second base, Jim Davenport of the San Francisco Giants at third base, Maury Wills of the Los Angeles Dodgers at shortstop. In the outfield, Philippe Alou has gone to right, replacing Bob Clemente, Mays remains in center, and Tom Davis in left. The new pitcher for the National League All-Stars, the eighth right-hander of the Cincinnati Red Bob Turkey. The announcement of the change is over the public address system now. Wills went in to run for Musial, who had batted for the pitcher. Well, after that, number nine. Now it will depend on... 
manager Hutchinson where he wants to bat his pitcher, Bob Perky. Juan Marichal of the Giants went two innings, giving up no runs, no hits. One walk, no strikeout. So Perky is the new pitcher. Crandall is still the catcher. has a record of 13 wins and one defeat with an earned run average of 2.55 from Pittsburgh. Perky will soon be 33 years old. Stands 6'2", weighs 195. So we'll check and as soon as we find out uh, the batting order, where pitcher Perky bats, we'll let you know. Rollins swings on the first pitch, hits a looper over the head of the first baseman, banks down the right field line, a base hit. Ernie running it down, and Rollins is on with a bloop single down the right field line. So Rollins greets Bob Perky with a broken bat Texas League single down the right field line. Hit number one off Perky, and only the second hit in the game for the American League All-Stars. That'll bring on second baseman Billy Moran with Rollins at first. Rollins had been hit by a pitch and popped to second prior to his single. Moran has flied to right and struck out. The infield against him, a double play depth. Bob Perky, a towering right-hander, checks the runner and delivers to Moran at the plate. The line's one in the left center field. That's going to be in for a base hit. Around second, headed for third is Rollins. And holding with a long single into the left center field alley is Billy Moran. And the American League strikes back. As they get the first two men on here in the sixth inning, a single by Rollins and a single by Moran for runners to the corners with nobody out and uh, brings to the plate Roger Maris, the center fielder from the New York Yankees who has gone over to, struck out in the first inning, and Chase Mays deep to the warning track in left center for his fly ball in the fourth inning. Two to nothing, the National League All-Stars lead it. Two runs on five hits for the Nationals. No runs, three hits for the Americans. The infield is back. Hoping to come up with a double play. They'll give up the run to get the double play. Perky to the set. He throws. Foul straight back for a strike, and it's nothing in one. One strike to count. Dick Donovan continues to work for the American League All-Stars, and now we're going to get another pitcher going in the National League All-Star bullpen. Barris at bat for the one strike count. It's Bob Gibson in the National League bullpen. Rollins at third. Moran at first. Nobody out. Tying runs are on. The pitch to Barris is outside. A breaking ball. One ball, one strike. Turkey has been a tremendous pitcher for Freddie Hutchinson, Cincinnati Reds this year. Throws a lot of breaking pitches, a knuckleball. Usually will waste the fastball. Once in a while, he'll try to slip it past you. Here's the pitch to Maris. There's a drive deep into right center field. Megan breaking back to right deep. He's at the fence. He's just he grabs it for the out. Hacking at third and scoring is Rollins. The ball away to second for Rand. That's a hot back to first. A great leaping catch by Willie Bain. Against the top of the wire fence in right center field. Sacrifice fly, no time at bat for Maris, and a run back in. And Rollins scored easily after the catch. Moran, who was all the way to second, had to hurry back to her. And with that catch, President Kennedy was on his feet. A great pass by Willie Mays to the right of the 410 foot sign, hit by Roger Maris. Here is Rocky Colavito to bat for the first time. He went in to run for Mickey Mantle in the fourth inning and then took over in left field with Leon Wagner moving to right. Maris still hobbled by leg injury. Checked by Perky. The pitch to Colavito. Swung on a ground ball back to the line. Perky falls down, picks it up. Throws to first. He gets Colavito. And on to second goes Billy Moran. Colavito in a smash to the box. Perky fell down, fielding the ball. Had to get up and chase it, charge second base. Threw quickly to first to get Colavito. 
on to second with Billy Moran. And the American League All-Stars now have the tying run at second with two outs. And Dallas Crandall is going out to talk to Bob Perky at the mound. Well, after being a very quiet ball game for the first five innings, suddenly this one has erupted. The National League scoring two in the sixth. The American League coming up with a run in their half of the sixth inning. They have Jim Gentile at the plate with Moran, the tying run at second base. Gentile walked in the second. He flied to left in the fourth inning. Turkey to the set position. He throws inside of the knees. Fastball to Gentile, ball one. The outfield, shading Gen- Gentile, deep toward right. Yawning gap between Mays, shaded into right center, and Tommy Davis, straight away and left. The infield is deep toward right. Perky checks Moran at second and delivers inside low. A curveball under the knees, ball two, no strikes to Gentile. Ernie Banks, the National League All-Star first baseman, is only about a step and a half off the foul line and almost pulled back to the rim of the outfield grass. Bowling at second is at the beginning of the outfield grass. The shortstop will almost directly behind the runner, Billy Moran, at second. 2-0, and oh, and the pitch coming to Gentile. Inside, that is fouled as Gentile tried to get out of the way of an inside fastball. It nicked the bat foul. Skipping onto the base of the screen, it's ball two and strike one now to Jim Gentile. For the moment, at least, Woody Mays has saved the National League with a tremendous leaping catch against the fence in right center field. Ball two and strike one to Gentile. Will slipping in behind Moran, the runner at second, flopping in close. The pitch, check, swing, strike two. Call to Jim Gentile. Gentile started to go on a high outside fastball. Checked his swing, but the pitch was over anyway, said Ed Hurley, the plate umpire. And it's ball two and strike two. Perky and Crandall, the National League battery. Banks at first, Balding at second, Davenport at third, Wills at short. Tom Davis in left, Mays in center. Teddy Thalou in right. Perky ready, 2-2 pitch. The knuckleball is strike three called, and Jeff Deal is not looking. So Perky... Strikes out Gentile to wrap it up in the sixth inning, but the American League All-Stars pick up a run on two hits. No National League errors, one runner left on. And so at the end of the sixth inning, the score is National League All-Stars 2, the American League All-Stars 1. Chrysler's going great and making great news wherever it goes. And one of the newsmakers, the red-blooded Chrysler 300. It's easy to own this direct descendant of the famous sports series. During All-Star Value Days, you'll get the kind of trade that lets you move up to Chrysler quality. See your Chrysler dealer now. You'll enjoy the luxury and power of the 300. And there are no junior additions in the Chrysler line to cut down your high resale value. Test drive the Chrysler 300 during your Chrysler dealer's All-Star Value Days. A new pitcher in the ballgame now, Dick Garvin of the Cleveland Indians. Replaces the radio fast foul. Second base is Bobby Richardson of the New York Yankees. Now playing center field is Jim Landis of the Chicago White Sox. Alavito remains in left. And Leon Wagner in right. John Romano is the catcher now for the American League All-Stars. He is Dick Donovan's battery mate at Cleveland. We move to the top of the seventh inning of a two-to-one ball game with the National League All-Stars leading. Camillo Pasquale then pitches three innings. He is charged with two runs and four hits. He won one, and uh, Pasquale struck out one man. So Dick Donovan comes on in the seventh inning. First man uh, he will face is Ernie Banks playing at first base. Batting.
Craig and Cleet, uh, Ken Boyer's number six spot in the order. Donovan delivers a tip foul, and it hits Romano on the right kneecap and bounces away. A strike to Ernie Banks. The batting order now for the National League. Leading off, Jim Davenport plays third base. Batting second, Billy Palou, the right fielder. Willie Mays remains the game bat third. Catcher Bob Turkey is batting fourth in the National League batting order. Tommy Davis remains in left field hitting fifth. Ernie Banks playing first base batting sixth. Del Crandall stays in the ball game. Frank Bowling at second base batting eighth. And Maury Wills at short hits ninth. One strike pitch coming to Banks. Swung on, grounded, sharply foul outside of third. Strike two, the count to Ernie Banks. Donovan, who was with the Washington Senators in 1961, winning 10 and losing 10, was the earned run leader in the American League. Traded over the, to the Indians during the offseason. Exchange for outfielder Jim Pearsall. Donovan has been a tremendous pitcher for Cleveland. Bank swings and lines a foul. Downstairs in left field, the count stays at two strikes. Donovan has a record of 11 wins and three defeats. A New Englander from Quincy, Massachusetts. Dick is 33, stands 6'3", weighs 205 pounds. These records we are giving you are through July the 1st. Two-strike pitch coming to Ernie Banks. Check swing, a ball down low. And it's one and two. Ball one, strike two, the count to Banks. Ernie, who has played shortstop many years for the Cubs, also at third base, now seems to have found a home at first base. One-two pitch coming from Donovan, a ground ball to third. Up with it is Brooks Robinson. He throws across to Gentile at first in plenty of time, and Banks is up. Robinson at third, throws out Banks at first, and here is Dal Crandall, the catcher. Dal has gone over two. He flied to left in the second inning and rolled out to Pasquale at the mound in the fifth inning. It's the National League All-Stars two, the American League All-Stars one. All runs coming in the sixth inning. Two runs on five hits, no errors for the National Leaguers. One run, three hits, no errors for the American League All-Stars. Donovan kicks and throws, a strike call, a sinking fastball. Hit the outside corner at the knee. Donovan has a very pitching assortment. Good fastball. He is out pitch. He is a hard slider. Has excellent control. One strike pitch to Crandall. His line to right field coming on in a big hurry is Wagner, and he makes the catch at the knees for the out. Crandall hit a sinking line drive in the right field. Leon Wagner getting a jump, charged in, and grabbed the ball for the out. Two down for the National League All-Stars in the seventh inning. Second baseman Frank Bowling of the Milwaukee Braves. Bowling, star second baseman of the Detroit Tigers, the American League, for several seasons before being traded over to the Milwaukee Braves a year ago. Frank has had a lot of illness problems this year. Takes a call strike. Fastball across the knees from Dick Donovan. Two to one, the National League All-Stars lead it. Donovan checking his sign with battery mate John Romano. Now into the motion, here's the pitch. Fouled at the plate. Strike two. Defensively, the American League has Donovan on the mound, Romano back of the plate, Gentile at first, Richardson at second, Robinson at third, Aparicio at short, Calavito in left, Landis in center, and Wagner in right. Crowd quiet for the moment, over 45,000 here at the All-Star Game. Here's the pitch to Bowling. Broken bat pop-up, back into shallow left. Aparicio going back, shields his eyes from the sun. He makes the catch for the out. And that's all for Frank Bowling. And the National League All-Stars in the seventh inning as they go down in order before Dick Donovan. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left off. And so at the end of six and one half innings, the score is the National League All-Stars two, the American League All-Stars one. Do you get excited when you see a home run? Mm-hmm. You get excited over a new car? Uh-huh. How about getting a new car for 2964? 
Well, how about a full-size Chrysler for $29.64? Now you're talking. It's the Chrysler Newport, still only $29.64. It's one big reason why Chrysler's going great and why thousands of motorists are moving up to Chrysler quality. Other good reasons. The Newport standard engine delivers 265 horsepower, and it uses regular gas. Really? How about you? If you've been thinking of moving up to Chrysler, now's the time for action during your Chrysler dealer's all-star value days. Trading's easy. You'll get a big trade and a great buy. Test drive the car that's really going great, the Chrysler Newport. Manufacturer's suggested retail price, exclusive of destination charges, still only $29.64. $29.64? That's great! Here is the American League batting order now after the changes by All-Star Manager Ralph Hope. Brooks Robinson leads off at third base. Bobby Richardson at second base batting second. Jim Landis in center field hitting third. Rocky Colavito bats fourth. Jim Gentile fifth. Leon Wagner, the number six hitter, fields a foul into the upper deck off first base. One strike to Leon. John Romano, the catcher, bats seventh. Saprizio stays in hitting eighth. And the pitcher, Donovan, will bat ninth. Wagner is 0 for 2. Reached on a force out in the second inning. Fouled the third in the fourth inning. Bob Perky ready. He delivers the knuckleball too high, and it's one and one. Both bullpens working now. Milton Pappas, young right-hander of the Baltimore Orioles for the American League, and Bob Shaw of the Milwaukee Braves for the National League. Perky's knuckler drifts high outside. Ball two, strike one. Wagner with 25 home runs. He became the first American League hitter to hit for the cycle has a home run in each American League ballpark now. Ball three from Turkey. Three and one the count. Two to one the score. The National League lead. They broke the scoring deadlock with two in their half of the sixth inning. The American League came back with one. The defensive gem so far made his leaping catch against the top of the fence in deep right center. Three one offering coming to Wagner. There's a high fly ball hooking foul. Way back into the upper deck. And it's three and two now to Leon Wagner. They have said uh, about Yankee Stadium that there never has been and probably never will be a fair ball hit out of there. I doubt that you could even hit a foul ball out of this one in so high. Three two to Wagner. Ground ball hit sharply to the second baseman. Bowling to his right. Up throws to first. He's out. And there's one out in the seventh inning. Bowling at second, throws out Leon Wagner at first. That'll bring on the catcher, John Romano, the Cleveland Indians. Two to one, the National League All-Stars lead it. Drysdale starts for the National League. Marshall in the fourth. Turkey in the sixth inning. Jim Bunning started for the American Leaguers. Pat Swell in the fourth. Donovan in the seventh. The check swing ruled a strike to John Romano. Romano at bat for the first time today. Facing Bob Perkey, side-arming right-hander of Cincinnati. Perkey swings in motion. He throws the curveball up around the eyes of Romano. Sent John ducking away, and it's one and one. Ball one and strike one. The count to Romano. Two to one the score. National League leading. Last of the seventh inning with one out and the base is empty. Turkey swings to his windup. Around comes the arm. The knuckleball hits sharply deep to third. Good stop by Davenport. Jim throws to first, and Romano's out by five steps. Davenport at third throws out Romano at first. Two out in the American League seventh, and here's the shortstop, Louis Aparicio. One for two, a triple in the third inning. Grounded out, short to first in the fifth inning. And as you might expect from an all-star, any one of these fellows can hit the ball over the fence. There's a sharp smash, one hop to bowling. Frank has it, he throws on to first, Aparicio is out, and it's a strong inning for Bob Perky, setting the American League stars down in order, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. 
And so at the end of the seventh inning, the score is National League All-Stars 2, American League All-Stars 1. All-Star Value Days are here from Chrysler Corporation. Fun time, summertime, best time to buy, best time to drive a Dodge Start. A Dodge Start. Pick a size, pick a price, pick Dodge Dart. The price is so low, you'll want to hear it twice. The roomy Dodge Dart starts at only $22.41. $22.41, based on the manufacturer's suggested retail price, excluding destination charges. And low price isn't all that makes Dodge Dart a smart choice. Here's what you get. Exclusive torsion air ride for the smoothest ride on the road. Self-adjusting brakes. A battery-saving alternator. Seven-soak rust protection. The Dodge Dart is quick to respond, quick to give you a lot more action on a lot less gas. So pick a size, pick a price, pick Dodge Dart. And right now, buy low, trade high during your Dodge dealer's all-star value days. The attendance today at DC Stadium for this all-star game, 45,480, which uh, is above the list of peak capacity and the largest crowd ever to see a baseball game in this stadium. They get more in for football because they add additional seats. 45,480 paid at D.C. Stadium today. Here is Marty Wills, the shortstop. He runs up to butt, takes high from Dick Donovan, ball one. Wills, a switch batter, getting left-handed against the right-hander Dick Donovan. on the cup. Donovan swings into the easy windup. Spins and throws. There's a pop fly into shallow left center field. Coming out in a hurry is Calavito and he can't get there. The ball dropped. Aparicio picks it up. Throws on to second and Wills holds at first with a Texas League single in the shallow left field. Aparicio went out. Calavito came in. Calavito was calling for the ball. He could not catch up to it. It dropped for a single. Hit number six for the National League All-Stars. They lost the American League six to three today. And they lead the two to one in the top of the eighth inning. Third baseman Jim Davenport of the San Francisco Giants. One of the great glove men in baseball. Batty now, former football star at Mississippi Southern University. Donovan checks Wills, delivers as a ground ball through the hole, a base hit to left field. Wills around second, and he'll hold there. Colomino throws in behind the runner. Wills going for third, the throw to third. He is safe at third. Safe at third, and Robinson and Aparicio Archer now with a third base up higher, Tony Benson of the National League. Jim Davenport grounded a single between Aparicio and Robinson to left field. Wills made a big turn around second base. Palavito fired in behind the runner to Bobby Richardson. Wills broke for third. Richardson threw to Brooks Robinson. And the tag play on Wills was not in time. So the National League has a big threat throwing. Runners at first and third, nobody out. And the batter, Felipe Alou, the right fielder of the San Francisco Giants. Donovan checking at first, delivers to Alou, who hit the high fly ball down the right field line. Maybe fair, maybe foul. Racing for it is Wagner. It's a foul ball. He makes the catch for the out. Here comes Wills to the plate, the throw, and he is safe in the plate. He scores. Oh, but Wills, great speed, got it called. It's a run batted in. Scored as a sacrifice fly for Felipe Bellou. And he will not be charged for the time at bat. On the throw to the plate, Davenport held it first. So, again, speed was the difference. As the ball was hit foul down the right field line, Wagner made a good running grab and a good throw to Romano at the plate. But John's diving tag of Wills not in time as Murray split across with a run that makes it the National League All-Stars 3. The American League All-Stars 1 and here's Willie Mays. So once again the National Leaguers have a two-run ball. That is hit number two. Two hits now off Dick Donovan. Davenport at first and one out. The pitch swung on and missed and Mays fell to one knee. 
Well, Willie might not have hit that one out of here if he had connected. But he'd have hit it pretty far. Force of his swing dropped him to one knee. One strike to Willie Mays. He's fouled to first. Walked, fly to center. He is also stolen the base. The infield, a double plate up against Mays. The outfield deep toward left. Donovan to the set position. Checks Davenport. Delivers outside low. Pitching away from Willie now. And the count is even at one and one. Ball one and strike one to Willie Mays. The National League three. The American League All-Stars one. This has been quite a ball game before 45,480 pays. A D.C. stadium record for baseball. One and one, the count. Donovan ready. He steps and throws. There's a drive. Rips the deep left field. Looking foul. Over the fence, but foul. Deep into the left field corner. A long strike two to Willie May. Willie got out in front of Donovan's curveball and ripped it, but he had it foul by 15 feet into the left field corner. Ball one and strike two to Willie Mays. One and two. Three to one, the score of the National League, leading the American League All-Stars. Dick Donovan on the mound, and touched up for a run on two hits. Here's the pitch to Mays. He reaches for an outside pitch and taps it foul up in the air to the right of the plate. Romano, the catcher, grabs it. The ball not hits too high in the air. And Mays, lunging at an outside pitch, popped it up to the catcher Romano in foul territory off toward the American League All-Star dugout along the first base side. So there are two men out. And we're going to get a banner for pitcher Bob Turkey. John Callison. Johnny Callison, young left-hand hitting outfielder. He's going to bat for the pitcher, Bob Perkey. Callison for a number of years. An outstanding prospect in the Chicago White Sox minor league organization. Traded away a couple of years ago, and he's become a good one. Swings on the first pitch and fouls it off. Strike one. Bob Shaw, the right-hander of the Milwaukee Braves. Well, apparently beyond the pitch for the National League All-Stars in the bottom of the eighth inning. The National Leaguers have a run in. They lead three to one. They have Davenport at first base with two men out. Callison batting for the pitcher, Bob Perkey. Donovan delivers outside of all and is one and one. Donovan and Callison should know one another. They were teammates together with the Chicago White Sox. Ball one and strike one to John Callison. Stocky, free-swinging left-hand batter. Donovan to the set position. The check of Davenport. The pitch is popped up. Foul. Coming back toward the screen. Romano coming back, and he can't get it. It lands right on the edge of the screen. Foul. So Callison stays alive with a count of ball one and strike two. John was born in Qualis, Oklahoma. 23 years old, 5'10", 180-pounder. He's developed into the ball player of the White Sox. Thought he well might become when they traded him over to the Phillies. But uh, the White Sox got uh, Gene Freeze for one in that deal. And uh, Freeze had some fair years in Chicago. Check swing by Callison as Donovan tied him up with a fastball in on the thumbs, and it's two and two. Ball two and strike two to John Callison, batting for the pitcher, Bob Perky. Romano sets the signs for Donovan. Jack of Davenport, the pitch swung on, ground ball, base hit, pass against field to right field, around second, headed for third is Davenport. He'll make it easily. Wagner's throw comes to the cutoff man, Bobby Richardson. And the National League now has Callison at first, Davenport at third, two out, and the batter is the left fielder, Tom Davis. Off Dick Donovan, it is base hit number three. Tom Davis. Who came into this game today with a batting average of 353 for the 
the Los Angeles Dodgers in regular season play has gone 0 for 3. Swings on the first pitch, hits a high fly to shallow center. Landis trotting in. Jim is there, makes the catch to retire the side for the National League All-Stars in the eighth inning. But the National Leaguers pick up a run on three base hits. There were no American League errors. Two runners left on for the National League All-Stars. And so at the end of seven and a half innings, the score is the National League All-Stars three, the American League All-Stars one. What's so good about the good old summertime? Dodge. It's one of the quickest cars on the road. It gets you to the lake or ball game in nothing flat. Six-cylinder or V8, the dark moves with more power than almost any car in its class. You get a lot more action on a lot less gas. That makes it fun to drive. And it's plenty roomy for those long weekends or vacation trips. So see your Dodge dealer during all-star value days. Pick a size, pick a price, pick Dodge Dart. <laughs> New pitcher in the ball game now for the National League All Stars, right hander Bob Shaw of the Milwaukee Braves. And the bat for pitcher Dick Donovan will be first baseman Norm Seaburn of the Kansas City Athletics. Seaburn, one time member of the New York Yankees. Big left hand batter wears glasses. The American League All-Stars needing two to tie and three to take the lead. With two innings left in regulation play, leading off in the bottom of the eighth inning against Shaw, it's Norm Seaburn. Shaw to the windup, he delivers. Fouled on the ground to the right of the plate, strike one. One strike, the count to Norm Seaburn, batting for Dick Donovan. Milton Pappas of the Orioles is the pitcher warming up in the American League bullpen. He will be on in the top of the ninth. Pitch to Seaburn. Trickle foul. Hit him in the foot and roll all the way to Cepeda at first base. But the ball was rolled foul immediately by Ed Hurley, the plate umpire. Augie Donatelli of the National League at first base looks at the ball, discovers a scuff mark or a shoe polish mark, and throws it out of play. National League got two in the sixth and one in the eighth. The American League won in the sixth inning. The outfield against Seaburn is deep toward right. Norm with tremendous power. Shaw delivers. Low inside a ball. One and two. Breaking ball. Shaw, uh, Shaw, another sinker ball specialist. Started out with the Detroit Tiger organization, then dealt to the White Sox on to Kansas City. And then over to Milwaukee last winter. Shaw nods in agreement to the sign posted by Del Crandall. Swings in motion and delivers. There's a ground ball hit sharply wide at first. Banks has it. Lobs his toss to Shaw in time. Seaburn is out. And there's one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. That'll bring on Brooks Robinson of the Baltimore Orioles. Playing at third base now, Mitch Rollins started. And this is Robinson's first appearance at the plate. Robinson of the Magic Glove. He's strong. He has hit 14 home runs for the Orioles this year. The outfield shades him slightly toward left and deep. Kinfield set up the same way. One out, nobody on. Shaw into the windup. The pitch is a strike call. Fastball hit the outside corner above the knees. Nothing in one account. Shaw and Crandall, the battery. Crandall has gone all the way back to the plate for the National League All-Stars. Here's the pitch from Shaw. Look out. And that hit Robinson. And uh, Robbie is setting up at the plate as Shaw decked him with a fastball, and uh, Robinson is showing uh, trainer Joe Torres of the New York Yankees where that ball hit him. Ralph Huff, the American League manager, comes out, and it appeared to hit Robinson in the vicinity of the left bicep under the shoulder. This is a real hummer from Shaw. This 
Got away. Robinson dropped. In the batter's box, but Paul hitting. Second hit batsman of the day for the American League. Rich Rollins was hit by Drysdale in the first inning. Robinson is all right. On at first, the batter Bobby Richardson of the Yankees swings and pops a foul out of play. In behind the American League dugout. Again, President Kennedy stands up for keeping a weather eye out. Gentleman down there with a straw hat has a glove seated uh, one seat away from uh, President Kennedy. Apparently, uh, he has the glove for the protection of the president. Pitch to Richardson, a uh, sharp drive, one hop to the shortstop wheels. He goes to bowling out at second, back to first, not inside. No double play, but forced at second was Brooks Robinson as Murray Wills went uh, quickly to his right into the hole to pick up the one-hop smash off Richardson's bat. He whirled and fired the bowling at second for the force out on Brooks Robinson. The relay throw to first, not in time to double up the fleet. Bobby Richardson, and here's Jim Landis of the Chicago White Sox to back for the first time. The pitchers of record right now. The win would go to Juan Marichal of the San Francisco Giants. The loss would be charged to Camilo Pasquale of the Minnesota Twins. The National League All-Stars lead it 3-1. to one. Bottom of the eighth inning. Landis represents the tying run at the plate. He swings and slices a foul down the right field line. Thanks, giving chase. And he won't get it. It's 20 rows back in the seat. In the event you missed it, 45,480. The biggest crowd ever to see a baseball game in D.C. Stadium. I had upwards of 44,000 for the opener here back in the 9th of April. When the Senators make this ballpark their home, play the Detroit Tigers. One strike, the pitch to Landis is low, a ball. Both ends are quiet now. Pappas is warmed and will be on to pitch top of the ninth inning for the American League All-Stars. Three to one, the National League All-Stars lead it. Landis at the plate. One and one the count. Richardson leads it first. The pitch is slashed foul. Fast third base coach manager Billy Hitchcock of the Orioles. Mickey Vernon, skipper of the Washington Senators, one of the finest men in baseball, coaching at first. One and two, the count to Jim Landis. Bobby Richardson, the runner at first. And with two out, Ernie Banks is not holding tight to the bag against the runner. Going in behind him, pitch to Landis. A looper foul. It'll be out of play. Again down the right field side, Ernie Banks gives chase. Banks, who belies his great power when you look at him, he's tall, very trimly built, doesn't uh, appear to have the strength to hit the ball as far as he does, but he has great wrist. Pitch to Landis is too high, just missing. Shaw started toward the National League dugout. He thought he had Landis struck out. A day tailor-made for the All-Star game. Temperature at noon was 78. I imagine now it's up to about 82, no more. Pleasantly comfortable, sun shining brilliantly. Beautiful setting. The pitch is low, ball three, and it's three and two. Shaw dealt Landis a curve down into the dirt, blocked well by Del Crandall. And now with two out and a 3-2 count to Landis, Richardson, the runner at first, can break. The outfield against Landis, almost straight away in deep. Three to one, the National League All-Stars lead it. We're in the eighth inning. There goes Richardson, three two to Landis. Swing and a miss. He stuck him out to retire the side. Jim Landis goes down swinging. Bob Shaw's first strikeout, and for the National uh, American League in the eighth inning, no run, no base hit, no National League errors, one runner left off. And so at the end of the eighth inning, the score is the National League All-Stars 3, the American League All-Stars 1. Powerful, quick, a real performer. America's first sports compact, the Dodge Lancer GT. Open the door of this sporty, spirited Lancer. Settle back in one of the twin contour bucket seats. You'll feel luxury in every detail. 
Lancer's your kind of car, and plenty easy to own during your Dodge dealer's all-star value days. kind of compact with Chrysler Corporation's advanced engineering features, unibody construction, and seven soak rust proofing to make Lancer your kind of compact in all kinds of weather. And now, during your dealer's all-star value days, you get the best deal on all Dodge cars, the biggest trades. Pick a size, pick a price, pick Dodge Lancer, another of the great action cars from Chrysler Corporation. By request, Casey Stengel, manager of the New York Mets of the National League and coaching at first base today, was invited into the box of President John F. Kennedy to uh, have his picture taken with the president. And Casey now is explaining it all to Augie Donatelli, umpire at first base. Left-hander Sandy Koufax beginning to warm up for... The National League All-Stars in the bullpen. We have a new pitcher for the American League All-Stars, the young right-hander Milton Pappas of the Baltimore Orioles. Dick Donovan pitches the seventh and eighth innings, and in two innings, he gave up one run. It was earned on three hits. Donovan did not block anybody, nor did he strike on anyone. Pappas will pitch to Ernie Banks, Del Prandle, and Frank Boeing if they all hit here in the top of the ninth inning with the National League All-Stars leading 3-1. to one. Pappas first pitch is swung on. There's a high fly to left field. Coming on is Calavito. Getting there, makes the catch for the out, and Banks is retired on one pitch. It's already 0 for 2. He grounded out third to first in the seventh inning. One out in the ninth, and the batter is catcher Del Crandall. The other National League All-Star catcher is John Roseboro of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Ralph Houck has uh, used Earl Batty of the Minnesota Twins. And John Romano of the Indians, he also has available to him Elston Howard of his own Yankees. Crandall at bat against Pappas. A pitch for Milt is a tall strike. Change of speed as Pappas took something off his fastball at the inside corner above the knee. Pappas works quickly, comes back with a fastball high. We have an account at one and one. Bunning, fastball, Donovan, and Pappas that pitch for the American League. One-one pitch coming from Milt. Curve back handle out of the plate, and it's two and one. The National League All-Stars three. The American League All-Stars one. We're in the top of the ninth inning. The American League All-Stars with one more shot in the bottom of the ninth. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Tap foul. Off the hand of third base coach Johnny Keene. John, who manages the St. Louis Cardinals. Ball two and strike two to Del Crandall. Pappas into the windup. He throws. Fat ball hit up in the air. Second baseman Bobby Richardson waiting under it. Backs up a couple of steps. He has it. And Crandall has gone 0 for 4. The American League All-Stars now have left-hander Hank Aguirre and right-hander Ralph Terry beginning to throw. Aguirre of the Tigers and Terry of the Yankees. Batter is second baseman Frank Bowling. If he gets on, the shortstop Marty Wills to bat. Pappas delivers too high a ball. Three runs on eight hits, no errors for the National League Stars. One run, only three hits, no errors for the American League All Stars. Touch to Bowling is swung on, hit straight away to center. Now moving to his left and in is Landis. He makes the catch and a strong inning for Milt Pappas as he retires the side in order. For the National League in the ninth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. So at the end of eight and one half innings of play, it's the National League All Stars three, the American League All Stars one. And coming to the bottom of the ninth inning, the American League All Stars will have the heart of their batting order up against. Right-hander Bob Shaw, the Milwaukee Braves, Rocky Calavito, Jim Gentile, 
Wagner. Leon Wagner, the first three. And this has been quite a ball game at D.C. Stadium for the largest crowd ever to see a baseball game in this magnificent new ballpark. Someone apparently had a leftover firecracker from the fourth. Shaw throwing down to his catcher, Del Crandall. The American League hits. Three of them, a triple by Aparicio off Drysdale in the third. That opened the inning, and then Drysdale bore down and got the next three men. Lee Thomas batted for Bunning and popped out. Rich Rollins popped out, and Billy Moran struck out. Then in the sixth inning, the American League got its only run when Rollins singled to right field. Moran setting the third with a single to left center. And then Willie Mays made the catch of the day. A leaping grab against the top of the fence in right center field. One out in the last of the ninth inning. 
And the National League All-Stars lead 3-1. to one. Shaw to the set position. He delivers. There's a high fly ball down the left field line. Racing for it is the left fielder, Davis. And it's a foul ball, and Davis grabs it for the out. A good play by Tom Davis. The throw back to first is knocked down by the pitcher, Bob Shaw, to prevent an overthrow by Tom Davis attempting to double up Jim Gentile, the runner at first. Tom Davis had a long run for that ball and made a good catch down near the box deep rating. The American League now down to its final out with John Romano at the plate, Gentile, the runner at first base, and two outs. The score is... 3-1, the National League leading. Time called. Romano backs out. He has something in his eye. President Kennedy is staying right to the end. Leaded back to the American League dugout. Here's the pitch to Romano. Change up over the head of John for a ball. One ball to count to John Romano. Romano's been up once. He grounded out. Third to first. Shaw checks Gentile. The pitch swung on. Ground ball. Base hit in the left field. The American League stays alive as Gentile moves to second and holds. And the American League All-Stars have the tying runs on. And the batter is the shortstop, Luis Aparicio. Hit number one off Shaw. And the base hit number four in the ball game for the American League All-Stars. Aparicio has one of the four, a triple hammered into the alley in right center in the third inning. Since that, he's grounded to short and grounded to second. One for three, Louis. Gentile, the runner at second. Romano, the runner at first. And Aparicio at the plate takes outside. Ball one. And Del Crandall runs the ball out now to uh, pitcher Bob Shaw. Well, at the moment, the American League All-Stars do not have uh, great speed on the bases. Neither Gentile nor Romano. Above average speed. But uh, Aparicio at the plate, he can move with the best. one nothing pitch to the way. Outside, ball two. As Shaw has twice tried to hit the outside corner away from Aparicio and missed for the pitch. Two on and two out in the last of the ninth inning. The tying runs are on base for the American League All-Stars. They trail the National League 3-1. 2-0 the count. Shaw to his set position. Check of Gentile. The pitch coming. There's a high drive to deep right center field. Running it down is Mays. He's getting there. He has it, and the ball game's over. Aparicio flies deep to Willie Mays in right center field. For the final out of the game, and in the ninth inning, the American League All-Stars, no runs, one base hit, no National League errors, two runners left on. And the final score, the National League All-Stars, three runs, eight hits, no errors, the National League left five men on base. The American League All-Stars, one run, four hits. No errors, and the American League left seven men stranded. In a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you. If you're the kind of a man who enjoys the very best, you'll enjoy the magnificent Imperial, America's most carefully built car. And to prove it, we'd be pleased to arrange a thorough comparison drive for you as we have for key executives of America's leading corporations. Most of the people who have already taken the test drive have found that Imperial was everything we claimed. So why don't you make this comparison drive? Your Imperial dealer will be happy to arrange it. Drive the magnificent Imperial. Let it speak for itself. Now it's a pleasure to turn you back to my broadcasting partner for this all-star game for a recap of this game, Lindsay Nelson. Thanks very much, John McLean. The starting pitchers, Jim Bunning and Don Drysdale, set the tone of the game at the start. Bunning in three innings allowed no runs, only two hits, a double and a single by Clemente. Drysdale allowed no runs, only one hit. Aparicio led off uh, in the bottom half of the third with a triple, but Drysdale got the next three. The first scoring came in the top half of the sixth inning when manager Fred Hutchinson sent Stan Musial left to bat for Juan Marichal, and he got a single, and Maury Wills was inserted to run from New Zealand. Wills promptly stole second base. 
Dick Roach single on the ground up the middle, scoring the speedy wills. Clement a single, his third hit of the day. And then Mays fly to deep center field, runners advancing to second and third after the catch. It was that deep. Cepeda grounded out from third to first, but Groat scored on the infield out, and then Davis grounded out the end of the inning, but the National League was out in front by a score of two to nothing. Coming right back in the bottom half of the sixth inning, the American League hopped on Bob Perkey, greeting him with successive singles by Rich Rollins and Billy Moran. Rollins going to third on the single by Moran, and then Rollins scored on a fly to center by Roger Maris, a tremendous catch made by Willie Mays in the deepest part of the ballpark against the low wire fence. That was the only run scored after the catch. In the bottom half of the sixth by the American League. And then in the eighth inning, the insurance run was added by the Nationals when Murray Wills dropped a Texas League single to left, Davenport single to left, and when Calavita threw in behind Wills to second base, Wills went on to third, sliding in safely. And then he scored on uh, a sacrifice foul fly down the right field line off the bat of Philippe Palou. That made the score to three to one, and that's the way it stood. The fielding play of the day, the catch by Willie Mays in center field in the sixth inning on the long drive by Roger Maris. One of the highlights of the day, the pinch hit by Stan Musial, who sets new records every time he comes up. This was his 22nd All-Star game, his 19th season of All-Star participation. And a stolen base by Murray Wells was a highlight. He leads the National League in stolen bases with 46. He leads the Major League. On hand today, 45,480 fans on a perfect baseball afternoon in the nation's capital with President John F. Kennedy on hand. He stayed for the entire contest. Vice President Johnson here and, of course, military leaders and distinguished baseball men from around the nation. In that all-star competition now, the American League has won 16, the National League has won 15, and there has been one tie game. Final totals for this, the 32nd all-star game, the National League, three runs on eight hits and no errors, the American League, one run, only four hits and no errors. The winning pitcher, Juan Marichal of the San Francisco Giants, the losing pitcher, Camilo Pasquale of the Minnesota Twins. And that just about wraps up the first 1962 All-Star Game. Be with us again on July 30th for the second All-Star Game when your host, as today, will be the Chrysler Corporation, makers of the Action Cars, and the Gillette Safety Razor Company, world leader in shaving. Our engineer has been Harry Alexander, our producer, Lynn Dillon. This is Lindsay Nelson speaking for John McClain. This has been a sports presentation of the NBC Radio Network. This is the NBC Radio Network.